injustice we indeed trusted and I actually managed to fix it so that I can hear myself. I can hear myself talk now. I can hear myself talk now with like no delay whatsoever. And I love that so much. I mean, it uses this microphone, which is kind of annoying, I guess, but you know, it's, it's better than nothing. And, and, and indeed, injustice we trusted. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so happy that you're here. I got like really happy right now. It's redacted time. I want to say you know what that means, but you don't. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what... <laughs> uh, yeah. I missed having you here too. Last time just didn't really work well for me. So... I'm better now. So, I can go here. I've done some changes though to my mic, so I don't know if like it's too, like too loud or whatnot. Hold on, wait, I gotta fix something I guess. I can like... Okay, why is... <laughs> why won't this work now? The music works, but the game doesn't. Well, uh, let me actually check out the DLC here. I feel like that's like an easy way to check if it works. Just start from... <laughs> oh yeah, hell yeah. That, that 13 frames per second though. Yeah, no sound. I don't know why, that's strange. That's really strange because it should be there. Hold on. Um. It's like... Why is Streamlabs turn all the way down? That's not supposed to happen. Nope, still no sound. Okay, um... <clears throat> what if I switch to... These. There we go! There it is. Finally. <clears throat> so, yeah. Let's just get to the special episode. I started this last time, but I'm just gonna start it over. Because I wasn't feeling it last time. You know? My name is Phoenix Wright. Head of the Wright Anything Agency and a lawyer. Although, I was doing something else entirely for a while there. As for why I decided to formally get back into lawyering... Let's just say there's unfinished business to take care of. Anyway, I thought I'd reminisce about my first case back on the job. And what a case it was. It happened only a few months after Athena joined our office. I just want to, like, um... Professor, this is, like, what Edgeworth fought so hard to give back. <laughs> Wonderful, truly. An orca with a mustache. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh god. Today is my first day back on the job as a lawyer. Putting this attorney's badge on again really makes it at home. Boy, am I pumped. Even Trucy said, looking good, daddy. So, Athena, Apollo, what do you think of the old attorney's badge? Wow! This ship ship aquarium show is great. I can't get enough of it. Um, Athena? 
Still can't believe they showed the swashbuckler spectacular on TV. Good thing I recorded this. Now, who's ready for another viewing? You already watched it five times. Let's watch something else now. How can you even suggest such a thing? This show is therapeutic. Uh, boss here asking you guys a question? What's so therapeutic about watching a killer whale? What? Don't you know anything? Animal assisted therapy is an established psychiatric treatment. You're kidding. That kind of thing really exists? It's a real thing. I've been to the aquarium myself to try it, and it really helps. I still go there every now and then to further my psychology studies. The last time I went, I saw a dolphin and an orca swimming around together. It was so. Hey, do you two think you could quit goofing off and do some work for a change? Work? We've already cleaned the toilet twice each. Hey, wait a minute. Is that your badge I see? Wow, thank you. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. <laughs> well, congrats on getting your attorney's badge back, boss. There we go. Thanks. Starting today, I'm officially a lawyer again. <laughs> I have the cleanest toilet in California. Pretty much, though. Sheesh, took him long enough to notice. Gee, Mr. Wright, with that badge on, you suddenly look so... capable. <laughs> um, thanks? It's not like I was some lazy bum, you know. What made you suddenly so fired up to get your badge back, anyway? Oh, well, I made a promise to a certain someone. An important promise. Okay. What could be so important? Anyway, we have three lawyers now, so we better start taking on lots of work. I'm all for that. Let's get this agency hopping. Well, we have plenty of enthusiasm. All we need now are some clients. It's been eight years since I last wore this badge. I feel like a rookie all over again. And this just in. The owner of Shipshape Aquarium. Captain Jack Shipley. Has been murdered. The suspect in the case is reportedly already in custody inside the aquarium. Nothing in particular. <laughs> Isn't that the aquarium we were just watching, Athena? It is! I can't believe it! A murder at Ship Ship Aquarium! But I love that place! We need to get to the bottom of this! Really? Guess I'm in luck then. I need Phoenix Wright to save my friend. Who in the world is this? Um, are you a client? Wait. That costume. It looks just like... I've got it! You must work at Shipshape Aquarium! That's right. You may know it. I'm Sasha Buckler. I perform like an agile catfish in our pirate show. It'll blowfish your mind. Minnow? Blowfish? Those puns floundered a bit. <laughs> I figured out the client's identity. Chalk one up for analytical psychology. My friend is under suspicion of murder, so I really need some help. That's why I've got to find this Phoenix Wright guy. Well, I'm Phoenix Wright. And this is Apollo Justice and Athena Sykes. They're lawyers, too. If there's anything you need, all you have to do is ask. The same goes for me, too, Miss Buckler. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me Sasha, and I'll call you all by your first names, too, if that's alright. Phoenix, Apollo, Athena, you have to help me. Please save my friend. I guess we better start by asking her more about her defense request. Miss Buckler, Sasha, could you tell us more about why you need our help? My friend is suspected of murdering the captain of Shipshape Aquarium. Captain, I thought the victim was the owner of the aquarium. Yeah, well, our aquarium has a pirate ship theme. That's why we call the owner our captain. We call the employee's crew, too. That's a pretty unusual aquarium you've got there. Anyway, one of the crew members, my friend, is being suspected of the captain's murder. They've already decided she's guilty. I think they're going to give her the death penalty. What? What happened to due process? My friend is as sweet and gentle as a whale shark. She wouldn't hurt a guppy. I know there's no way she murdered anyone. They won't believe me. But with a name like Wright, I figured you'd be able to help me set them straight. 
Wait a minute. Don't tell me she picked you all because of a bad pun. Ouch. I see my reputation doesn't precede me. But seriously, my name can't be the real reason she's here. What's the real reason you picked me, Sasha? Well, to be honest, I asked the whole slew of lawyers, but they all refused. They said stuff like, there's no merit to taking your case, or I'm not sure I can help. They're all as cruel as sharks, with hearts punier than whitebait. Oh, I can really feel Sasha's frustration. With nobody on her side, she must feel all alone. But helping people like her is the whole reason I became a lawyer in the first place. And then I heard about a lawyer named Phoenix Wright. They say he defends clients to the end, no matter how bleak the circumstances. Hmm, I guess my reputation does precede me. Not sure how well deserved it is, though. I thought to myself, if anybody can save my friend, it's you, Phoenix. Quite a toll order there for a man who just got his badge back. I don't want to let Sasha down, or her friend. Let's help her, Mr. Wright. Let's save her friend. That's just what I was thinking. Sasha, we'll accept your case. Y you will? Oh, thank you. You're a lifesaver, literally. Well, no time to stand around and mull it over things. I want you to meet my friend right away. Come to Shipshape Aquarium with me. You got it. Now go too. Sorry, but I need you to stay here and keep an eye on the office until Trucy gets back. You never know when a new client might stop by. How come I'm the one that has to stay behind? Thanks a million, Apollo. Well, ladies, let's move to the aquarium, shall we? It's so pretty. Wow, this is gorgeous. It's just like being under the sea. Yeah, this is the aqua tunnel, our pride and joy. I'm really glad you like it. I'm gonna go ahead and fill the detective in on your arrival. Take a look around the tunnel, and then come meet me at the pool up ahead on the right. Hey boss, look at this cute little fish. Mmm, I bet it would be delicious grilled. Seriously? Is that really all you can think of? Well, I didn't get to eat lunch today. Oh, and here comes some grilled chicken. That's not a chicken, it's a penguin. Come here, little cutie. Okay, bye then. <laughs> With a backpack. It ignored me. Maybe it was hungry too. But look, it dropped something. It's an ad for the Swashbuckler Spectacular Show. Penguin had a whole bunch of these stuffed in its backpack. So it's passing out flyers, huh? How cute! A carrier penguin that distributes flyers. We could use one of those, under those for our office. Well, can't keep the client waiting. We'd better get going. Yeah, you're right. Time to roll up our sleeves. <laughs> 16 minutes in. Good job, Twitch. Good job. Huh? I don't see a Sasha. Ah, are you two the lawyers Miss Buckler mentioned? This is set before everything that happened. This is like his first case back, you know? Detective Fulbright, are you the lead detective on this case? That's right. As long as evil exists in this world, there will be no rest for me. And who is your sea urchin-like friend there? I don't believe we've met. Is he talking about me? I'm the defendant's lawyer, Phoenix Wright. Well, I'm Detective Bobby Fulbright. People don't usually get to see this area. It's only open now because of the investigation. You two are pretty lucky to get this peek behind the scenes of an aquarium. It, it's, it's weird. Just ignore everything that's happened up until now, I guess. Like, we know. <laughs> lucky. Right. This guy is even louder than Apollo. So, where is the suspect being questioned? And um, where is Miss Buckler? 
Here I be, me buckos. Shiver me timbers. There be one of dread pirate. No stashes, scurvy swabs. I beg your pardon? I'm not anyone's swab, scurvy or otherwise. More shameless than a sea lion you be, trying to make off with me best bucko. If you want to pick a fight with us, you'd best bring along an army of great white sharks. Sasha, what's going on here? Let me introduce you. This is the friend I was telling you about. Her name is Ora Shipley. But she only responds to Orla. So that's what people call her. I'm her trainer. She's the suspect in the murder, but she'd never hurt anybody. I'm just letting it, like, set in. She's the suspect? Yeah, and thank goodness you came before they put her down. I'm really glad. Grateful to the two of you. I just know you'll save Orla. What? Don't tell me you didn't even know who your client was. An orca is the suspect? Her client is an orca? Is this for real? Oh, did I forget to mention that? Oopsie. Oopsie, sure, sure, let's go with that, Sasha. That's one very big oopsie. Also, I don't know if you could I don't I don't even know if it, it works like that, but uh is my mic like not peaking as much as it usually does? Like it doesn't like cut out as often. I mean it still does it, obviously, if I get like too loud. But it doesn't do it as much. By the way, what was with that mustache earlier? Oh, this be part of the costume for the Swashbuckler Spectacular. When I be wearing the mustache, I be one of Captain Orla's Swashbucklers. A transformation as dramatic as a pufferfish's, wouldn't you say? I don't think I would ever say that. It's a pirate-themed aquarium, so that's why Orla is wearing a pirate hat, right? Yep. She really loves wearing hats. She puts them on all the time. But her fake mustache keeps falling off, so that's a problem. I I see. Well, why don't we start with you telling us a little bit about a bit more about Orla? So you're really serious about me defending Orla? Of course I am. You're the only one who can do it, Phoenix. I heard you once question an animal during a trial, and that got your client off the hook. To be fair, that was a that was a parrot, and they can actually talk, you know? Well, some of them, anyways. <laughs> no way! You did that? I, uh, might have tried something like that at one point in my career. Ooh, you're gonna have to tell me about this later, or I'll ask Apollo for all the juicy details. Of course, because Apollo is his number one biggest fanboy. <laughs> oh, shoot! Oh, well, it's not really that big of a deal. Thank you. Nothing has really happened. I've just like moved some places. When I heard you didn't discriminate against animals, I knew you'd hear me out. Again, that was a parrot. This is an orca. They don't talk. <laughs> I have to warn you though, I don't know anything about orcas. I mean, they don't eat people, do they? Oh, she's not happy about that. Yikes! I think I made her mad. I don't- I won't have to talk to you- I won't have you talk that way in front of Orla. Work is a feelings too, you know? Yeah, boss. They have emotions just like we do. S sorry, is anger the only feeling I inspire in women? Don't worry, she says she forgives you. Besides, orcas are very picky eaters, so Orla here only eats fish. The captain went to feed Orla this morning, and then he was found dead in this very room. Could you tell us more about his death? So the owner of the aquarium, Jack Shipley, was discovered murdered. Yeah, 
It was about 10, 10 this morning, just after the aquarium opened. A visitor was viewing the orchid pool from the visitor's corridor and screamed. The orchid pool is the tank here. Yeah, that's right. And this pool is built so that guests can see into it from the corridor on the first floor. The security guard and I heard the scream and came running into this pool room, where we found the captain dead at the side of the pool in his swashbuckler costume. He was as big and tough as an old crocodile, the captain. I still can't believe he's dead. Mr. Shipley was very important to you, wasn't he? Sorry, I didn't mean to get all sad goldfish on you. Sad goldfish? Okay, time to snap her out of it. When it's showtime, it's time to smile. That's what the captain always says. By the way, do you know why exactly Orla is being accused of the crime? Can you think of any reason why Orla would come under suspicion? Police think Orla went berserk during practice for the Sparkbuckler Spectacular. But Orla would never do anything like that. Right, Orla? Aww, just look at that face! Isn't she adorable? The charges just have to be false. I hate to break it to you, but the police don't usually base its decisions on cuteness. That's right, we base them on facts. Take a look at this. A photo of the victim, huh? He's got a wound on his head. Very perceptive. The victim and the orca were the only ones here. What's more, we couldn't find a weapon of any kind around. So, what's the theory on how Orla supposedly killed the victim? They say orcas sometimes kill their prey by ramming into them underwater. I believe this orca did just that by pulling the victim into the 65-foot pool, and then ramming him while they were in the water. Hmm, without any suspects besides Orla, this could be one tough case. No official autopsy has been ordered, but an orca attack makes sense. Why hasn't one been ordered? Accidental death due to a failure to exercise proper oversight over an animal. The medical examiner said it wasn't a homicide, so we don't need an autopsy. So Marla is going to be put down without proper, without a proper investigation? That isn't fair! That's nothing short of police negligence, Detective Fulbright. The incident wasn't determined a homicide, so there is nothing we can do, Miss Sykes. Ordinarily, the owner, of, the owner of the aquarium would be held responsible for the oversight failure. But the owner is the victim himself, so all we can do is hold the orca responsible. Phoenix, isn't there anything you can do? They're going to put Orla down. Sasha and Orla are depending on me. I want to do everything I can to help them. But how do I help an orca? Wait. Yes, I can do this. I can defend Orla in court! I got my badge back now, so I know exactly what I have to do. <laughs> We're defending an orca in court? <laughs> I'll defend Orla in court. Huh? <laughs> Even an orca deserves a fair trial. If the one responsible for Orla is dead, then I'll take responsibility for her. You what? I guess doing crazy things just once in your career wasn't enough, huh? What the heck? I'll take responsibility for her, too. Are you two insane? It's just a case of accidental death caused by an animal. It's not a murder case. With no evidence of foul play, this case will never go to court. Let us investigate the crime scene. If we can prove this is a murder, we might be able to take it to trial. And then Orla would certainly need the help of a few good lawyers. Hmm. I guess so. But who's ever heard of a trial for a killer whale? Just because it's never been done before doesn't mean we can't do it now. But... Hmm... Please, Detective Fulbright, for justice's sake. The police have determined that an animal that has harmed a human should be put down. But I don't know for sure whether that was a just decision. If your sense of justice compels you to take on the defense of this animal, and my sense of justice tells me to, to let this case be re-examined for possible merit. You mean it? 
Really? That's fantastic! You're not such a bad guy after all, Detective Fulbright. <laughs> Athena. Sweetie. He killed your mother. <clears throat> oh boy. <laughs> this just hits so differently. You're not such a bad guy after all. <laughs> sure about that? Even the fact you're actually even worse. <laughs> to be honest though. Just remember, this case hasn't been officially recognized as a homicide yet. I'll get in touch with the prosecutor's office, but I'm not making any promises. Anyway, I'd better be off. You two are our lifeboats. I'll be right here if you need me. Thanks. I've got a feeling we'll really need your help with this investigation. We're still not sure if it'll go to trial, but as Orla's lawyers, we'll do everything we can. To get this case into court, we'll need a prosecutor to make an indictment. So we have to find enough evidence to prove that it's a criminal case. It just has to be something that shows the culprit was somebody other than all Orla. Hmm, Detective Fulbright said there, were, there were no weapons in the area other than her. So we'd better look for something to prove him wrong. I'd better make a note of that so I don't forget. Sure, organized. Okay, and then he just talks about the, the notes. I don't need that. Yeah, I know how to do this too. Sure. It all boils down to thorough legwork. Well, let's get started. Is that show makeup above Orla's eye? That's right. It's a starfish. Kind of makes her look like a punk rock and pirate, don't you think? A punk rock pirate killer whale. Uh, it's official. Society's on the road to ruin. Well, I think Orla is one hot rockfish. Speaking of rocking, how do you get Orla to do what you want during the show? I give her signals with this whistle. Oh, but I didn't hear anything just now. It sounds out of the range of human hearing, just like a dog whistle. Orcas have better hearing than people do. They can even hear the whistle underwater. That's so cool! I wish I could give commands to Orla. Anybody can do that. All they'd have to do is learn the signals. Here, Athena. You can have one of our whistles. Consider it a present. Gee, thanks! As for the actual commands, I'm afraid I can't teach them to you. They're top secret. Hey, there's a cannon in the shape of a shark. I'd love to try firing that thing. Boom! Are these cannonballs supposed to look like fish eggs or something? Hmm, but why fish eggs? Why not baby sharks? Think about how crazy it would be to have sharks go flying through the air. Watch the thrilling life or death struggle as the little tykes fight to stay alive out of water. I can see it now. The trauma. The mayhem. The whirlwind of teeth. A tornado of sharks? Not even Hollywood could conjure up something that insane. Be sure about that. What a mess. Was all this stuff knocked over when the victim struggled with his killer? It's possible, but it would be hard to prove. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Ugh, so this is where the body was found, huh? If they suspect Orla, maybe they found some evidence of an attack on, on the victim. Orla didn't attack the captain. She loved him. The captain rescued Orla when she was little, after she got beached on the shore. He tried to release her into the ocean, but she kept coming back. I can tell Orla's sad about losing the captain. She's just not her usual chipper self. Orla must really love the aquarium and the captain. There are six of them? Oh my. She's the only one around here big and strong enough to play with the big, tough captain. Every day, she made a point of headbutting him and stealing his hat. 
Yikes, I guess you weren't kidding when you said the captain was a really strong guy. Look at all this stuff scattered everywhere. I see some swords. I wonder if they have anything to do with the case. They're made of rubber. I doubt they could be used as a weapon. But I still bet if someone got whacked with one, it would still it would sting quite a bit. Bet beat. Yeah, I, I guess it would. And I think I could stand the pain. Who are you, Markiplier? <laughs> yeah, good for you. Look, there's a blow-up dolphin and an anchor too. Mr. Wright, are you even listening to me? Stop looking at those toys. Yikes, guess I've been caught red-faced. Huge octopus. That must be a show prop too. One of its legs is missing though. Wouldn't it be exciting to take on a huge enemy like that? I'd like to give it a try myself. As a lawyer, that is. I know you have an insufficient number of limbs to out out object it, right? I guess that's about it. Under different circumstances, I would have loved to see the swashbuckler spectacular. The three of us always perform the show together. Me, Orla, and the captain. Today's show has been cancelled, but we could put on a little performance for you now. We be Captain Orla Swashbucklers, me buckles. We love to sail the seven seas. We come to route that main... Manji Blaggard Dread Pirate Nostash. Avast! There he be, Nostash himself, prepared to feed the fish. Um, am I playing the role of Nostash? Well, Sasha has a stash and you don't, so I guess so? Hit him with your water cannon, Cap'n, and spare no quarter. Swim through storms and wave all oh, because okay. Just for me <laughs> I know that part. <laughs> oh, that was awesome! Your performance packed quite a wallop. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I for one feel like I took quite a beating. Sorry about that. Can't have a show without a bad guy rule, right? That is singing, Orca, huh? It must have been tough to train her to do that. That's Orla's best trick. She can only sing one song, though. Well, she's still got one up on a pianist who can't even play one song. Well, now that we've had a taste of the show, we'd better do some more investigating. Good idea! Let's go to the Aqua Tunnel. So you all done investigating the pool already? We had a look good look around, but now we're moving on to other areas. How is the police investigation going? Did you, say, for example, find any other suspect besides Orla? Ha ha ha! Wouldn't that be fortunate for you if we did? But no, I'm afraid not. And even more unfortunate for you. I'm afraid we found decisive evidence of an orcus of the Orca's guilt. What? Please tell us more, Detective. What's this decisive evidence? Don't hold on uh, Don't hold out on us now, Detective Fulbright. I'm very sorry, but I can't share classified information with the defense. Especially not security footage that shows the moment of moment the orca attacked the victim. Yep, I'm to personally see to it that this baby stays safe. I it will never leave my side. Excuse me, but there is a call for you, Detective. I'll be right there. Sorry guys, you know how it is. Well, 
well, he never said that he wouldn't leave its side, I guess. Now, let's sneak a peek. What the? Is this supposed to be the moment Orla attacked the victim? This little bit of footage doesn't prove anything. I agree. I believe in Orla and Sasha. Let's just continue with our investigation. Good idea. Huh? There's a sticker on this camera that says return to the pub of danger. If somebody there manages the cameras. Let's check it out later. Sorry about that. Prosecutor Blackwell called to remind me to go feed Taka. So where were we? Oh, that's right. You two got any more questions for me? No, we're good. Thank you. For leaking all your info. <laughs> This looks like one of those hands-on exhibits. It has a real air of danger, don't you think? Well, the banner does say it's the pub of danger. Let's see. According to the description, this room is... A pub where pirates gather, explore, and interact with sea creatures. Actually feel the electricity of electric eels and feed real piranhas. Experience the terror of the seas with these dangerous experiments. All of those sound less like terror and more like torture to me. Hmm. <clears throat> I'll, I'd thank you to keep it down there, blue boy. I'm conducting an experiment. Do not disturb me, unless you wish to be zapped with an electric eel. My apologies, ma'am. Oh, she seems intense. Excuse me, but who are you? Before you ask others, shouldn't you give your name first? Basic manners, young lady. Uh, oh, yes, of course. My name is... Never mind. I will simply call you Yellow Girl. It's easier that way. I am Norma the Plume. I am very interested in Ship Ship Aquarium, and I am a frequent visitor here. But I don't want to be Yellow Girl. You think I'm going to be called Blue Boy? No, let's just see what she has to say. You say you're interested in the aquarium, but you don't look like a staff member. Hmm, let's see. I've got it! You're someone completely unrelated to this aquarium. That's some deductive reasoning there, champ. I am a visitor, a patron, a customer, or a guest. And what might you be? I'm not a what! I'm a lawyer! Hey, that's what I was going to say. And I run a law office! Well, whatever you are, I don't have the slightest interest. Mm -hmm. Just who does she think she is, boss? A visitor, a patron, a customer, a guest, remember? I thought they closed the aquarium and weren't letting members of the public in. Oh, oh, oh. But I have special permission, you see. And why exactly is that, if I may ask? Well, because of the incident- Heavens! I've said too much. I remember this. Psych locks. Huh? Psychedelic rock? Cyborg locks? What? No, no, psych locks. It's the power of this Magathama. It gives me the ability to see, see the secrets locked away in somebody's heart. If I can remove the locks, locks, I can uncover their secrets. I didn't know you had a magical item like that. It looks like this lady knows something about what happens. I'll just use my Magathama and undo her psych locks. Huh? I can't see the locks anymore. Huh? The color of that stone looks different from before. That's funny. Maybe it's just out of juice. It can do that? Yeah, a certain girl I know poured her spiritual power into it for me. Without that power, I can't undo the psyche locks. No way! Hmm. Why do I have to keep quiet about it anyway? I've never been any good at keeping secrets. But I did promise after all, so I guess I had better keep my mouth shut. Who did you promise what to? No comments. Now go away. Ah, <sighs> just when I thought we could find out more about the case. Let's go try find some other way. I'm sure we'll find something. I 
I mean, if she wants to do that, I guess. <laughs> hey, Detective Fulbright's gone. It looks like the police investigation is over too. That's too bad. I was hoping to get a little more out of him. Sorry. Yo, yo, yo ho, ho, cleaner? No, uh feeder? That's right. Yo, girl, why are you hiding from me? I'm searching all around like this be a bad dream. Is that somebody rapping? I feel yo something. I feel yo, sometimes you make me so mad. Hold on. But now that you're gone, I'm just so sad. Your rifle just come back to me. We can be together and sing creak creak creak. What's with this guy rapping and making strange bird sounds? Yikes, who's there? You didn't hear me rapping, did you? Yeah, well, maybe? Urgh. Look, just do me a favor and pretend you didn't hear nothing. I'm by us, and who might you be? I'm Marlon Rimes. I'm an animal keeper here. But the aquarium is already closed today. And at least I'm pretty sure it is. Pretty sure? You don't sound too certain. Oh, are you new here or something? Wow, yeah, that's right. Pretty good guess. So who are you guys? I'm Phoenix Wright. And I'm Athena Sykes. We're lawyers and we're going to represent Orla. By taking our case to court and proving she's innocent. Are you serious? You want to defend an orca in court? Marlin gets it. Oh. But if you're here for Orla, that must make you friends with Sasha's. Sorry if I came across rude. Sounds like he's friends with Sasha. Sometimes when I'm by myself, I like to rap to pass the time. Especially when I'm around the animals I love. Oh, I love animals too! Especially marine creatures like dolphins! I like marine creatures too, but just the ones you can eat. Yeah, all people who like animals are good people. That's what I always say. If there's anything I can do for you two, just say the word. I just started working here, though, so I don't know how much help I can be. Mr. Rhymes seems pretty friendly. Yeah, friendly and agreeable. So, what exactly do you do here as an animal keeper? Mainly, I clean the place and feed the animals. Wiping all this glass takes forever. Love that for you. Ah, oh, so that's why you know so much about orcas. Hold on, I <laughs> I've dropped some stuff on the floor. <laughs> what the fuck? How is that? Oh, from there and here. Ugh. Is that it? You think that's it? Yeah. <laughs> oh no. There we go. Ah, it's fine. It's no big deal. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It was just like these biscuits or whatever. I just accidentally hit the bowl they were in, and they just like came flying out. Wiping all this glass takes forever. Now fucking bet. <laughs> oh my god. I can imagine. This tunnel alone must take most of the day. I also prep the food that the animals eat. That's the hardest part of all. You mean it's really difficult to get the hang of? Nah, I mean I'm a vegetarian, so cutting fish and meat and stuff up creeps me out. Now there's something I never expected to hear from a pirate. Do you know anything about the incident that took place this morning? Yeah, one of our guests saw what happened and started screaming. I came running, but by the time I got there, I couldn't see the orca or the captain. Speaking of the captain...
Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, I'm just yawning. To be fair, I woke up at like five and I was like, fuck! What's he like? A strong captain who can turn a wild bunch of ruffians into some great pirates. He always treated us fairly and equally, human and fishes alike. The real deal, man. Hey, what are you crying for? I'm not crying! It's just, I can feel your heart crying, that's all. Girl, what you talking about? I'm not crying either. I guess I won't mention that his eyes are puffier than a pair of pufferfish. I bet Sasha and our vet Dr. Crab are even more upset by his death. Vet? This aquarium has a resident vet? Yeah. Yo, hold up. I haven't seen Dr. Crab this morning. Staff are supposed to stay put. The night shift has been on duty since last night. They won't let but they want us but they won't let us go home. Sasha even had to get a special permission to go out looking for a lawyer this morning. Hmm. We haven't seen anybody who looks like a vet. Were you rapping something about looking for a weapon earlier? A rifle or something? <laughs> no, not a weapon. Rifle is the name of one of our penguins. A penguin? Why would you name a penguin something like that? I would I would guess that they're wearing a coat. <laughs> Hoi! Yo! Yo! Yo ho! Ho! For the battle! Prep for the war, little lady rifle gone even the score. You think you can't escape with your pride? Nuh-uh, you just gonna be straight up the night. Yo, yo, yo ho, ho, yo, 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 yo ho, ho, ho. <laughs> anyway, that's what she's like. So we named her rifle. Oh, sure. Okay, but did you have to wrap it? That's just how I roll. Does rifle wear a backpack by any chance? Yeah, that's the one. So you've seen her, huh? She's always running away. She's such a good runner. We decided to put her to work delivering flies. Do you really want a dangerous penguin like that running loose? Aw, oh, Rifle's not dangerous. She only attacks people she doesn't like. When we ran into her earlier. She didn't attack us. She straight up ignored us, actually. Hey, I have an idea. If you run into Rifle again, would you mind feeding her for me? She didn't come back to the pool at feeding time like usual, so I've been looking for her. She loves the smell of fish, so she might come over to you if you have some. Oh, I would love to feed a penguin. That'd be okay, right, boss? I don't mind, as long as you carry the fish. Phew, it smells so fishy. Really? What a shocker. Oh yeah, besides Rifle, I've been looking for Small Fry too. Small Fry? Is that another penguin? Nah, she's a friend I made. A high school girl. She went off looking for Rifle somewhere and hasn't been back. Is she your girlfriend? What? Nah, no way. Sasha's the one I... So you like Miss Buckler, do you? Well, I really respect her, you know. We have different tastes in music, but I admire the way she lives her life. It's not like I like her, it's more complicated than that. I'm pretty sure that all adds up to like. She tries to put on a brave face, but I think the captain's death is hitting her the hardest of all. After all, it was her human show partner that got killed by that orca. So you think Orla really did it? Well, I can understand how Sasha feels. But she's the only one of us who doesn't think the orca did it. Oh, I see. I guess it isn't easy to believe in somebody who can't even speak up for herself. Anyway, let me know if you see a rifle or a small fry, okay? Small fry said she was gonna go check the orca pool. Maybe we'll head back there then. Huh? There's something on the left side of the pool that wasn't here before. Looks like an electronic sword. Hey, you're back. Hi, Sasha. What's with this strange sword here? Oh, that's a walkie-talkie. It's probably rifles. A rifle can use a walkie-talkie? She's always running away, so we attached a walkie-talkie to her. 
Not this one. She's apparently like been put free like several times, but it just she just keeps going coming back for some reason. We can hear the sounds around here. We can usually guess where she is. And not if she drops the walkie-talkie on the floor. I remember if the crew has one too, so we can communicate back and forth. We can use them to broadcast to specific parts of the aquarium. Cool, huh? But she doesn't want to be freed. Also, Benki is your... Wi-Fi finally up and running again. <laughs> well, if Rifle's walkie-talkie is here, then Rifle might still be here too. Rifle, come out, come out, wherever you are. Are you okay? You have to be careful around pools, or you might slip right in. I'm more afraid of my heart jumping right out. Hey, who's that riding on Orla? Isn't that Rifle? You're right! Come here, Rifle! Aww, she ignored me again! Why doesn't that penguin like me? Huh? You have scared Rifle away without yelling. Well, I'm not giving up. I'll make that penguin like me if it's the last thing I do. Yes. Hey, get back here, you little pipsqueak! <laughs> oh, sorry, Rifle. But at least you seem all right. Hey, it's... it's... Pearls? Oh, Mr. Nick! I haven't seen you in ages! Could Pearls be the small fry Mr. Rhymes was talking about? Congratulations on your return to lawyering! I've been thinking about stopping by your office for a visit to congratulate you. This is Pearl Faye. I call her Pearls. She may dress a little funny, but that's because she's a spirit medium. A real prodigy with great power at that. I've known her since she was little, and she sometimes comes to the office to visit. She's just a little older than Trucy, so she's been like a big sister to her. I guess everyone here knows Mr. Nick, then. He's such a nice guy, don't you think? Is she trying to be my big sister, too, now? What are you doing here, Pearls? My summer camp is here on a field trip. I've never been to such a big aquarium before, so I was really looking forward to it. But then that incident happened, and the police just finished questioning me. Oh, I see. Um, Mr. Nick? Who is that lady next to you? Um, so yeah, your Pearls is 17 now. She's the same age that Maya was when we first met her. I'm a new lawyer at the Right Anything Agency. Oh, how do you do? My name is Pearl Faye. My cousin and my friends call me Pearly. Pearly it is then. Nice to meet you. I mean, probably. She's a hopeless romantic. So, how did the two of you meet? Well, you know how I used to travel to Europe to study their legal systems, Pearls? I met Athena on one of those trips. So tell me more about how the two of you met in Europe. Hey, I thought I was supposed to be asking the questions here. A long time ago, Mr. Wright helped me out of a difficult jam. That's when I started thinking about becoming a lawyer like him. So you're like her mentor, huh, Nick? Huh, Mr. Nick? Yeah, something like that, I guess. Mr. Wright is the whole reason I am who I am today. He was the one who told me my knowledge of psychology could help people in court. Gee, Mr. Nick, it looks like you've become a real adult since the last time I saw you. You've always been an adult the entire time I've known you, Pearls. <laughs> well, 
would you look at that? Rifle loves you. She sure does seem to be attracted to pearls. <laughs> I'm so glad she likes me. Penguins are adorable, aren't they? I even bought myself a little penguin calendar here at the aquarium gift shop. I have it hanging from my bag already. How cute! A calendar in the shape of a penguin! A calendar is a real hit with all our female visitors. I even have one myself. And the rest of the staff think it's too cutesy. Ooh. I guess it doesn't really fit the whole rough and tumble pirate image very well. Shut up, it's adorable. But, hmm, why does this calendar smell kind of like fish? What do you mean, Mr. Nick? Please don't be rude. Uh-oh, I got Pearl's mad. She's ready to fight. She will kick your ass. So you were looking for Rifle too. That's right. I was trying to help Mr. Marlin, the Admiral Keeper. Come here, Rifle, come on. She went towards Orla instead. <laughs> Why can't I get Rifle to like me? Maybe you should quit chasing after her with that scowl of yours. Mr. Nick, how could you speak to a lady so rudely? Uh-oh, I got Pearl's mad. Again. Why don't you try to get Rifle to take some food from you? Oh, great idea! And I have just the thing to offer her, too. Rifle, I have a present for you. It's chalk filled with love. Here you go. Orla ate my love, my love-filled fish. At least it looks like she enjoyed it, though. I think Orla and I just had a bonding moment. Friendship blossoming with the exchange of some food. Oh, isn't it moving, Mr. Nick? I think moving might be going a bit far. Anyway, how did you get Rifle to come to you so easily, Pearls? I heard Rifle was attracted to the smell of fish. Mr. <laughs> Nick, are you saying you smell like fish? Uh, maybe just a little, yes. Hmm, huh, I guess I need to change my clothes. That's odd. I wonder why Pearl smell like she's holding a bucket of fish. Hmm, Marla doesn't usually want to eat at this time of day. We've even been giving her more food than normal at her regular meal times lately. Is there something wrong with Orla's feeding habits lately? Yeah, something's weird. The new guy Marlin feeds all the other animals besides Orla. The captain and I, her trainer, are responsible for feeding Orla. It was the captain's turn to feed Orla this morning. But Orla keeps coming to me and signaling she's still hungry. I already learned the signals. She wants my fish chock filled with love. How long are you going to keep saying that? She sure is excited to make a new friend. But I don't think the captain would have forgotten to feed Orla. Rifle and the big creature, they certainly seem to love each other. This is Orla, the orca. Rifle and Orla are best friends. They belong together like a clownfish and a sea anemone. Anemone? I don't know. Care to phrase that in a way us non-biology majors can understand? Oh, so this orca is a suspect. I read in a book once that orcas eat penguins. Don't you worry about that. Norma here is really gentle and she never eats anything but fish. <laughs> what should I understand? <laughs> oh yeah, you're a you're a you're a biology major. <laughs> She's an old sweetheart. As a matter of fact, she even tolerates Rifle picking on her. It's true, she doesn't- she does seem very gentle. She hardly seems like a killer whale. Well, yeah, that's- that's right. As lawyers! We have to do everything we can to save this beautiful, gentle creature. You're going to defend her in court? She's quite the defendant, isn't she? She's the biggest defendant we've ever, we've ever had. Literally. 
Yeah, we're defending an orca in court. <laughs> oh, Pearls, I have a big favor to ask. What is it, Mr. Nick? It's about my Makatama. Its spiritual power seems to have vanished. Oh, that Makatama brings back memories. I remember pouring my spiritual power into it. That was so many years ago. Guess that's why it's almost out now. Here you go, Mr. Nick. It should be fine now. Thank you, Pearls. Now I can break Psychilox again. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. Well, I think I'll go find Mr. Marlin now. I have to bring Rifle to him. Pearly sure seems right at home at this aquarium. Hmm, you're right. But didn't she say this was her first time here? Apparently, that girl was in the staff corridor earlier this morning. That's why the detective was questioning her. What was Pearls doing in the staff corridor? I don't know. I thought she was Marlin's friend or something. The staff corridor, huh? Something about that doesn't sit well with me. Well, if it bothers you, why don't you just ask her about it? Yeah, good idea. Let's go catch up with her. Looks like Mr. Rhymes and Pearls are talking. Ahoy! A small fry was so clutch with ye assist. Rhymes and Rifle reunion in the tail and in bliss. The animal keep rhymes ain't gonna get cut. My prop, small fry, this case is now shut. Yo, yo! Yo ho ho! Nailed it. <laughs> it was my pleasure. See you again sometime, Rifle. Okay, let's go, Rifle. See ya, small fry. Oh, Mr. Nick! I didn't see you there. Hey, Pearly. You and Mr. Rhyme seem to be really good friends. Could you tell us more about your rela relationship? Well, I... Oh, Pearls. Um... Pearls, why do I see a psyche lock? Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Nick, but I really shouldn't talk about it. Hmm, I don't really feel right about digging into Pearls' affairs. But she was here at the aquarium at the time of the incident. Whatever she's hiding could help us in court. Sorry, Pearls, but I'll have to use my Magatama on you. Take that! Psyche lock, a lock on a person's heart that only I can see. The deeper the secret is hidden, the more locks there will be. And if they're not even aware that it's a secret they're they're holding, the lock will be black and unbreakable, pretty much. Pearls only has one lock, so I should be able to undo it fairly easily. But if I make a mistake, I'll be locked in a loop and won't be able to move forward. Okay, time to give it a try. Pearls, you have to tell me about your relationship with Mr. Rhymes. Relationship? There is no relationship between Mr. Marlin and me. You're just a visitor to the aquarium and an animal keeper at the aquarium, that's all. But there are areas where ordinary visitors to the aquarium don't get to go. You were here before the incident occurred, weren't you? Staff corridor. Yes, that's right. But how did you know? Someone told me you were there. Got confused and went the wrong way. I didn't know it was a corridor just for the staff. But that's all it was, Mr. Nick. It didn't have anything to do with Mr. Marlin. Sounds reasonable. I guess I'd better move on to my next topic. Actually, there's something else I've been wondering about, Pearls. Why do you smell like fish? Fish? What makes you think I smell like fish? Well, there's a certain someone who convinced me it wasn't my imagination. Rifle. Rifle? She's apparently very attracted to the smell of fish. Rifle didn't want anything to do with Athena, even though she had a bunch of fish. So why then was Rifle so attracted to you, Pearls? Uh, I don't know. Hmm, looks like she's still not ready to talk about it. You had an object with you that smelled fishy too. In fact, I think this has something to do with your secret. Take that! 
The fish is smell smelling. The fish is smell smelling. <laughs> the fish is smelling calendar has something to do with your secret, doesn't it, Pearls? I can't wait to you, Mr. Nick. I'll tell you about me and Mr. Marlin and, and about the calendar. Whew, it was only one lock, but it sure took some work. Please tell me about your relationship with Mr. Rhymes. I became distracted by the gift shop almost as soon as we got to the to the to the, to the aquarium. Before I knew it, everyone else had moved on and I got lost. I was so embarrassed to be lost at my age. Oh, Pearls, I know big crowded places are hard for you. I sort of panicked and went down the wrong corridor. I ended up in the food prep room, and that's where I met Mr. Marlin. I really startled him when I called out to him. He jumped so much, he startled me too, and I lost my balance and fell down. Oh, Mr. Nick, I spilled so many fish all over the floor. I guess that explains why you smell fishy, pardon the pun. Yes, and my calendar fell off my bag and got buried in all the fish, too. Is my mic audio okay, by the way? I never really got any feedback on that. I don't know if it's like a bit too loud or what not. Because I turned off the mic a bit. Doo -doo. So it's- it's okay? <laughs> or should it be louder? Should it be... More quiet? I don't- I don't know. It's good, okay. I'll take your word for it. Yes, and my calendar fell off my back and got buried without, in all the fish too. But it doesn't explain why Pearls wanted to keep it a secret. Why did you want to hide your meeting with Mr. Rhymes? I didn't want him to get in trouble over feed sanitation regulations because of me. But Mr. Marlin said he didn't want anyone to know he was in the food prep room. Huh? Why not? What was he doing in there? Before I spoke to him, he was staring at a calendar. But because of me, he dropped his calendar too. We had to search for it among the fish. Wait a minute. This calendar of yours, it already has writing in it. It does? But I didn't write anything in it yet. There's something written here under today's date. Meet the captain at the Orca Pool at 7 a.m. Maybe my calendar and Mr. Marlin's got mixed up. Pearls, about what time did you run into Mr. Rhymes? I think it was about 10.15 when he had the info desk announced that I was lost. So I must have first gone into the prep room at about 10.10. I see. Do you mind if I hang on to this calendar for a while? It might be a clue to the victim's movements before he was killed. All right, and be sure to give it back to Mr. Marlin later, okay? Good, now maybe I'm ready to remove Miss the Plume's Psychologs too. Yes, let's go. Back to the Papa Danger. <laughs> and you people again. You're becoming quite the nuisance. If that ver veterinarian won't come out, then I might have might just have to give up and leave. Veterinarian? Is that the Dr. Crab Mr. Rhymes was talking about? You are correct. He likes to shut himself up in that back room over there and won't come out. But I don't think he's even in there today, so I'm about ready to go home. She sure seems to know a lot about the workings of this aquarium. Maybe a little something about the incident this morning, too. Mr. Wright! This is no time to be standing there thinking to yourself. It's time to put your psychedelic clock skills to work and uncover her secrets. That's Psychilock, Athena. Psychilock. Take that! <laughs> Mr. Plume, I want you to tell me the secret you're hiding. I'll do nothing of the sort. It would mean breaking my promise. I don't know who you made this promise to. You will tell me. You're not an aquarium employee, and yet, here you are, after the place is closed. I'm a 
must mean you're connected to the incident involving the owner somehow. <laughs> I don't know anything about any incident involving the owner. No, I think you do. I have a piece of evidence here that suggests you do know something. It's the... security footage. <laughs> you are? Good for you. <laughs> According to Detective Fulbright, this shows the orca attacking the victim. And the person in this footage is wearing an outfit just like yours, Mr. Plume. Oh, I suppose there's no hiding this bombshell figure, is there? Yes, it is I. <laughs> and I think I can guess why you were here at the aquarium. You aren't simply a visitor to the aquarium. What you really are is a witness to the murder. You are a visitor who also happened to witness the death of the owner, Black Sh Shipley. That is cr- Oh, I want to say it, but I promised the police. It's not good for you to keep things inside, you know. I'm sure you'll feel much better once you get it all out. I- 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 I give up. I'll tell you everything! If she wanted to tell me this badly, why couldn't she have just done so from the top? I think anyone would agree that I held it in for as long as I could. But I couldn't be expected to withstand this commoner's badgering any longer. Please calm yourself, Mr. Plume, and that's top-class badgering to you. You are correct. I witnessed the killer whale's crime with my own eyes. You got a problem with that, Blue Boy? Boss, Mr. Plume's anger is so powerful. Even I feel like I'm about to explode. You have to do something, quick! Please don't explode on me. Could you start with telling me what you saw? I witnessed the very moment the killer whale attacked the victim. I told the police what I saw as well. I'm the sort of person who simply can't rest until the truth is known. Hmm. So both Mr. Plum's statement and the footage point to, point to Orla's guilt. Hmm. Pardon me, but you seem pretty pleased that you witnessed this incident. What? Pleased? Shame on you. Are you implying that I am happy about an in innocent man's death? No, of course not. I, I just don't get the sense that you are you were afraid of Orla. It's more like you were interested in her. Are you... You know, I wasn't sure, but I was thinking that maybe... Are you perhaps one of my fans? Is that how you knew? That I am the nonfiction writer, Norma de Plume. You get it? You get it because it's it's her nom de plume. Wow. Oh, that Norma de Plume. So big fan, huh? I'll just show my shuffle. <laughs> no, I've never even heard of her. Well, now that you've figured me out, there's no sense in trying to hide who I am, I suppose. Talking to fans is part of a writer's duty, after all. <laughs> but I'm not a fan, I tell you. So what exactly have you written, Mr. Plume? Oh my, you mean to say you truly aren't familiar with my work. I write the truth. I take great pride in my craft, you know. I've been gathering information on Orla the Killer Whale for a year now. I've been very worried about Orla's violent tendencies. And today, my concern was proven to be well justified. Orla isn't violent! She's a sweet and gentle soul! Oh, oh, oh. The moment you let your guard down with that Killer Whale. Chomp! Ship Ship Aquarium has always denied the Killer Whale's violent streak. But it has been rumored to attack people. The rumors are just rumors! And they aren't necessarily true! Yes, I realize that, but I only write the truth. That is why I questioned the owner directly. But he refused to allow my research, and he even had the audacity to say to me, You're nothing but a nuisance. Coming here day after day, don't ever come back again. It sounds like her research was a bit too much to take. But then, how did you get in here if you've been blacklisted? I have my methods. <laughs> this lady is shameless. Hmm. 
We won't let you speak badly of Orla. We're going to defend her. In court. Don't ask me how. <laughs> I'm only stating what I saw with my very own eyes. I came to the aquarium today to observe the killer whale. But on my way to that thing's tank, I heard its cries. You can hear Orla from the visitor's corridor? There are speakers there in the corridor up near the ceiling. Apparently that speaker is there so visitors can hear the killer whale's sounds. In any case, as I approached the killer whale's tank, I heard its cries. And when I arrived, I saw something terrifying. What did you see? The killer whale stealing the swashbuckler spectacular hat the owner was wearing. And then, the moment it bit him and shook him mercilessly to death within its jaws. What? Orla bit the owner to death? Just as we trust. So I take it Mr. Dipl Mr. Plumes just finished telling you what she saw. Detective Fulbright, I guess you've already heard it too. Yep, when we took her statement earlier. As you heard, I'm afraid that accidental death is really the only thing it could be. Yes, and a dangerous creature like that cannot be allowed to harm anyone ever again. But she's not dangerous. Sorry, but the prosecutor's office said the case didn't have enough merit to go to trial. There was one prosecutor, though, who expressed an interest in the case. Really? And couldn't we have that prosecutor take a look at the investigation reports? Unfortunately, I doubt he even he'd take action without evidence of a homicide. Uh, no, like, she witnessed the, the moment of... The Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, this is before that trial. Okay. Honestly, because I can hear myself now, like, directly with this mic, it's really strange because I can literally hear, like, every single small sound. So I'm, like, scratching my face and I can hear it. Yeah, this is this is Phoenix's first case with his badge back. He just got his badge back that Edgeworth worked so hard to like make happen. And his first the first thing he does is defend an orca in court. <laughs> no, I know that you can't hear that, but I can hear it and it's strange. <laughs> it just feels really weird, all right? Look, I understand how you feel, Mr. Lawyer, but maybe you should give up on this one. Not a chance. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, <laughs> but yeah. We'll just re-examine the crime scene and straighten our case. Well, if it's if that's your ver version of justice, I won't stop you. We won't rest until we find proof it wasn't accidental death, Detective. You'll see. Let's go, Miss Wright. Time to check out the crime scene one more time. There is this, um, comic about it. I can probably try and find it later. Alright then, let's start the re-examination. Pronto! I'm gonna go check out that mess in the back one more time. Athena, wait! No running! GG. Are you okay? It didn't look like she tripped, but... Uh, I slipped. Huh? Orla? What is it, girl? Athena! Are you alright? She crashed into all that stuff behind her. Uh, I tried to get out of the way, but all I did was slip and fall. Again. That was a pretty amazing wipeout. Are you hurt? I'm okay. But why did Orla spike that ball at me? After all, the fish I gave her. I thought she liked me. Maybe she thought you were the main entree. Very funny, boss. <laughs> In any case, let's give the ball back to Orla. Huh? Looks like everything got shifted around when I fell on it. Hey, you're right. There are things now that we couldn't see before. 
Like another ball. I guess Orla really likes them. Look! There's something new by the Aplin of the body, too! We better take a good look around. What's this? A coin? You missed the right! There's blood on it! You're right, but it's dry. Do you think it could be the victim's? What was it doing all the way over here, in the first place? Hmm, I'm not sure, but now that we have found blood outside of the pool... It just might help us prove that there's more to this case than just accidental death. Hey, you're right! Orla certainly can't leave the pool after all. Speaking of coins, take a look at this. There are a few coins around the body here, too. You're right, boss. But where did they go? They aren't here anymore. You don't think somebody picked them up, do you? Hey, look at this mark on the floor. What do you suppose it is? That's where we stand when we want to play volleyball with, Mor with Orla. Volleyball, huh? Yeah, if we stand there, she'll spike the ball right at us. So when Orla spiked the ball at me earlier, that was one of her tricks? It doesn't mean she hates me? Ah, she wanted to play with you. She loves volleyball. She used to play with the captain all the time. Aww, Sasha looks so sad. Okay, time to snap out of it. This is no time to be all dejected and mopey like the blobfish. That's right. Time to put, a, put on a smile and stay strong, right? What's a blobfish? Or do I not want to know? It's okay, they're very funny looking. They look like a blob, literally. The perfect name for the perfect fish. <laughs> what do you mean they are not? Oh no! They look pretty funny, though. Do they swim or do they just, like, kind of, like... Is your cat walking on, on the keyboard? <laughs> I can't imagine that they can actually swim. They just seem way to like blobby, you know? <laughs> How do they move? <laughs> do they move? <laughs> oh no, that child is hurt! What? Call an ambulance! Hey! It's just the dummy! It is? Oh, I mean, of course it is! I was just testing your response to an emergency. Well, I guess we just found out that you don't bluff well under pressure. Uh -huh. I guess I'll just have to keep practicing then. I wonder what the dummy is for anyway. Well then, we use it to train Orla. It's smaller than a human, but it does the job. Some of our tricks can be pretty dangerous, so Orla practices them on, on the dummy first. Forget the tricks, those spike marks look pretty dangerous. Hey, Sasha. Would you happen to know anything about this coin? Oh, I guess I missed one. I just finished cleaning up the rest of them. You picked up all of the coins already? That's right. After the police finished their own investigation, they gave me the go-ahead. I haven't found them all yet, though. I'm still missing a few. Well, if they aren't beside the pool, maybe they're in the pool. Let's go to that ladder over there and take a peek at the bottom of the pool, boss. Look, I think I see something at the, on the bottom of the pool. <laughs> I knew it! Want me to go down and check? 
You can't jump in dress like that. You'll drown under, under the weight of your clothes. No, I won't. I'm a pretty good swimmer, you know. Be that as it may, that pool's really deep. I doubt you can hold your breath that long. We are the biggest threat. Interesting. But maybe Sasha can. Huh. Phoenix, look at all these coins I found at the bottom. Thanks, Sasha. So, there really were more, more of them down there, huh? You seem to be finding them all over. I wonder how many there are all together. Including the ones I put away, there are 300 of them. Therefore, the show. Ah, I see. Hmm, sounds like they'd be heavy. About seven pounds, I'd say. A little lighter than a stringfish. Well, I'd better go put these coins away where they belong. So seven pounds of coins scattered around the scene, one of them with blood on it. And it had to be related to the case. I wonder how the blood got on that one coin. Wait a minute. Could it be... Remember how the detective... Oh no, I, I like your blabbering. It's 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 nice. <laughs> yeah. Remember how Detective Fulbright said that they couldn't find a murder weapon? Oh, what if these coins were the weapon? Huh? How could a little coin kill a grown man? Well, one coin by itself isn't much of a threat, but three hundred coins together would def could definitely be used as a weapon. All you'd have to do is put them in the bag. If you put seven pounds of coins in a bag and swung it at somebody, it would make a pretty formidable blunt instrument, wouldn't it? It would explain how blood got, got on this coin. Oh, I get it! If that bag of coins is the weapon, then we can use it to prove Orla's innocence. I don't see anything resembling a coin bag around here. Maybe the killer took it with them. Yeah, it would certainly make it look like Orla did it if they did. You know what I think, Mr. Wright? The bloody coin alone should be enough to prove this might have been a murder. I agree. It shows the possibility of a human killer other than Orla. Yes! This is just what we needed! Let's go show this coin to Detective Fulbright and Mr. Plume right away. Good idea. Let's hope they're still at the pub of danger. Oh, you're back. So, did you find anything? Of course you didn't. Remember, even if you don't succeed, it's the effort, effort you make that's important. Is he trying to console me? Let's show them the evidence we found. The one that points to a human culprit. Right, because we won't let Orla be put down. Let's take a look at this blood-stained coin. <laughs> Seize and desist at once. What kind of man shows a lady blood? <laughs> she doesn't have to get so worked up. What are you terrorizing this lady with? Come on now, let's see it. I found this coin beside the orca pool. We did see a large number of coins beside the pool, but not one with blood on it. We just learned that there's 300 of these, weighing about 7 pounds altogether. Now what do you suppose would happen if a person was assaulted with that many coins? What? So you're saying the coins might have been used like some kind of blunt weapon? If the blood belongs to the victim, then yes, it's entirely possible. Hmm, but, it, but I wouldn't call it decisive proof that the real culprit was human. You wouldn't? Why not? Because there'd have to be something to put the coins into to make them a... To make them a weapon. Without that something, it's just not going to be enough to pass muster. But I will say that your theory does seem to warrant further investigation. I'll call the prosecutor's office and ask to reinvestigate for a possible criminal angle. You will? Thank you very much! I really hope Detective Fulbright can convince them. Hmm... You won't believe the answer I got. 
when I explained your passion for this case in the police's investigation, and they said that the prosecutor I mentioned earlier would be willing to take this to court. Really? So does that mean a new suspect has emerged? No, I'm afraid not. To be frank, Prosecutor Blackwell said he just wants to prove that Orc is guilt in court. Wonderful. What? It's Prosecutor Blackwell that wants to prosecute Orla? That's fine, Detective. Thanks for arranging this for us. Well, I must say you're taking this rather calmly. Defending Orla in court was my idea from the start. And I'll do whatever it takes to save her. Hmm, in that case, I'll do whatever I can as well to see that justice is served. Mr. Plume, will you be a witness for the prosecution? A trial for a killer whale? I've never heard of such recklessness before in my life. But I will reveal the truth about this killer whale, and then write all about it. Ha ha ha, sounds like a plan. I feel just come along with me. We have to prepare for tomorrow, and I still have to arrange for an autopsy. Oh, 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 I look forward to tomorrow. Until then, blue lawyer and yellow fan. I am not a fan! Well, at least we managed to get the case to go to trial. But how in the world will we defend an orc in court anyway? To be honest, I'm not really sure myself. Plus, Mr. Plume said Orla bit the victim. This trial sure isn't going to be easy. But I love a challenge. <laughs> and we ought to be just fine. I guess I should go over that swashbuckler spectacular you were watching this morning. Yeah, we can have a formal viewing back at the office. There's nothing decisive against Orla and the security cape, but that doesn't mean much. I'll just have to find a more concrete way to save Orla at tomorrow's trial, or else. Okay. I'm gonna... Mm. Let me see here if I can find the thing I want. I mean, it's not that one. Where is the one I'm looking for? This one, found it. Yes. All right, uh, desktop, here we go. Hey boss, they say Wright got his badge back and he's already got his first case lined up. That's great. I had to pull a lot of favors to make that happen. I hope he makes me proud. They say he's representing an orca. Of course he is! Of course Phoenix Friday is using this amazing opportunity I fought for to represent an orca. That ninja guy you've been helping out is prosecuting. Of course, of course! Yep. <laughs> Sorry. I just had to do that. Opportunity I fought for to no, shut up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ninja guy, yeah. Okay, sweet. Ah, <laughs> I figured it was your cat that that like walked on your keyboard, right? <laughs> it was like NM4, 1BN, and I was like, ah, it's your cat. <laughs> I see. That's how you say it's dinner time. Give me food, human. <laughs> uh. Good morning, Mr. Wright. Good morning. Chipper as ever this morning, I see. I'm just thankful we actually get to have a trial for, or for Orla. As a matter of fact, I just ran a few laps around the courthouse to get extra pumped. And I just splashed my face with some water to get the sleep out of my eyes. Oh, I also killed the swashbuckler video so we can watch it anytime. Sweet, let's just keep it on, just put it on repeat, thanks. It just might help our case. Interesting. Okay, whatever. 
By the way, you have some serious dark circles. Did you stay up late watching this? What? M me? No, I, uh, just woke up early, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> it's so one brand, it is. I just put on a um, video. You know what? Actually, let me do it again, because why not? No, actually, no. I'm gonna do it afterwards. <clears throat> Guess I need to cover them up. I get ragged on enough as it is by pros Prosecutor Blackwell. Speaking of being pumped, I'm pretty fired up for this trial too. It's been a while. <laughs> that explains why your hair is spikier than usual. I mean, look at it. It's all super pokey and prickly and stuff. It's amazing. That was a compliment, right? Good luck, Mr. Nick. I'll be cheering you on from the gallery. Thanks, Pearls. It's been so long. I'm actually a little nervous. Good morning, Mr. Lawyer. Oh, Mr. Rhymes. You came to watch the trial? Yeah, Sasha is back at the aquarium with Yorka. So I thought I'd better come here to watch for her. Well, don't you worry. We're going to win for Orla. Yes, hedgehog defending Orca friend. That's it. <laughs> That's the episode. <laughs> Isn't that right, boss? Right. One unprecedented trial coming right up. Whew. Here come the demons. Court is now in session for the trial of Forrest Shipley. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Hmm. Must we waste words on this? Prosecutor Simon Blackwell. Known as the Twisted Samurai. He's the prosecutor who is also a convicted felon. They say he never conducts a trial without his loyal hawk Taka by his side. Mr. Wright, it's been quite a while since I've seen you like that. The lawyer in which seats suits you. You look younger somehow. Thank you, Your Honor. And you look as young as ever yourself. <laughs> well, I have to keep up with you folks after all. By the way, has the defendant arrived in court yet? Surely you jest your baldness. Did you not receive the memo? The defendant, or Shipley, is an orca at ship shape aquarium. <laughs> uh, an orca? Arrangements for this trial were made only yesterday, so I didn't have time to review. But an orc as a defendant? It's patent, patently absurd. Hmm. Direct your comments to the defense. He's the absurd fellow who insisted on defending the orca in court in the first place. Absurd or not, I will carry out my duty to defend my clients. Your duty to defend your crying aunt? Don't you mean your crying orca, Mr. Wright? If we are to proceed, we must treat the orca as we would any other defendant. Every soul, be it of man or beast, is of equal value. The question is whether that soul is painted in black or white. Take Tucker, for example. He is as human in spirit as you or I. The real question is, am I in for more pain, as always? Hmm. More car or not, I suppose the defendant still is a defendant. And I vow to render my verdict fairly and impartially. <clears throat> now then, Prosecutor Blackwell, your opening statement, if you if you would. I suppose I can hardly leave it to someone who knew nothing of the defendant. Very well, listen carefully. The orca murdered the owner of Ship Ship Aquarium and the aquarium's orca pool. The orca apparently toyed with the victim mercilessly as he died. A sadistic orca? What a chilling thought. And where exactly is the defend is this defendant now? Inside this. A, a cell phone, Prosecutor Blackwell? Hmm. Time marches on, your baldness, with or without us. It's 2027, and I still have a flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> I borrowed this TV phone from the aquarium, which will allow us to interact with the orca. A TV phone? Very well. The court accepts it into evidence. 
funny thing is that this came out in like 20... 15? Something like that. Maybe 2013, I don't know. But I don't know why they like... Stick to like the outdated technology. It's so funny. Because even by the time this came out, we had better technology than this. <laughs> You will be able to view the defendant in question on this large monitor. Fulbright, prepare for a transmission. Ha ha ha! You've got it, Prosecutor Blackwell. They can connect the TVs. <laughs> we will proceed with the defendant on telecast. Mm. So that is the orca that stands accused, is it? Aw, she's waving her flipper at us. Maybe she's cheering us on. Marilla, wish Phoenix and Athena luck. Oh, it's quite cute, isn't it? And this adorable creature is suspected of killing a man? Marilla is really pouring, pouring on the charm, huh? She's far from cute. She is a violent, reckless animal. That's right. The name is Bobby Fulbright, and I'll take over the, the explaining from here. Now, if I could direct your attention to this diagram of the crime scene. Following the report of an orca attack, we the police raced on over to the ship to Ship Shape Aquarium. There, we found a guest who says she saw an or the orca and the victim for from the visitors' corridor. As the witness was watching, the orca suddenly went crazy and attacked the victim. The orca was the only one there. Therefore, no one else could have committed the crime. It's not quite finished, but I have a portion of the autopsy report here. Instant death. You know, somehow I doubt that. I bet it's gonna fucking change later. For the updated autopsy report. <laughs> Instant death from a brain contusion. There are signs of blunt force trauma all over the body. I can't imagine the terror of being attacked underwater by such a large creature. But attack it did. Prepare yourself for the grisly details, your baldness. The prosecution moves to introduce our witness, Fulbright. You got it, Prosecutor Blackwell. In justice we trust. One brave lady whose fine sense of justice compelled her to speak, coming right up. How dare you make me wait? Don't you know I'm a busy woman? I would love to have written an entire book for all the time I spent in that lobby. Um, Prosecutor Blackwell. Well. I am Norma de Plume, and I am a non-fiction writer. Am I the only one who isn't telepathic here? Looks like she can read into people's words just as well as I can read into people's hearts. Not everything needs to be a competition, Athena. What? Norma de Plume? The great non-fiction writer Miss Norma de Plume herself? I've read all of your works and enjoy them immensely. Your million seller, The Great Grief of the Great Thief, is one of my favorites. Oh, are you a fan, Your Honor? I could give you my autograph if you'd like. The Great Grief of the Great Thief? Yatagarasu? Putting that out there. Oh, are you a fan, Your Honor? I would give you my autograph if, you, if, you, if you'd like. Wait a second. I could swear you looked much different in the photos in your book. Well, I used ones from ten years ago in my book so that the paparazzi won't harass me. The judge seems so shocked. The visual disconnect must really be doing a number on His Honor's head. Could we get started, please? If I find you to be lacking as a judge, you will see your debut in my books. Such harsh comments. You really must be the real Norma de Plume. Who knew Mr. Plume was so famous? Enough jabbering. Tell us, tell the court what you saw and keep it brief. I would thank you to not order me around. I am perfectly willing to tell everyone what I witnessed. It was the moment of the murder. 
Very well then. Please proceed with your testimony. I went to Ship Ship Aquarium to see the killer whale. As I was watching the killer whale from the visitor's corridor, it suddenly went crazy. I saw the killer whale bite the victim to death with its huge mouth and deadly teeth. Attempting to remain calm, I reported the incident to the police immediately. That adorable defendant really did all that? Hmm. It must be much more vici vicious than it looks. Now, deliver your judgment so I may carry out the sentence. Objection! Um, the defense would like to do some defending first, if that's alright. Hmm. Must you drag this out with your tomfoolery? The defense always has the right to cross-examine the witness, you know. A fellow inmate told me this just this morning. If you want something signed, all you need is a document and a witness. But... Let me guess, they were convicted for a contract fraud, right? What we need in this case is the evidence and a, de and a witness to convict. It's as simple as that. That's like I guessed right. Sorry, but as Miss Sykes said... Okay. The defense has every right to cross-examine. Isn't that right, Your Honor? Yes, of course. You may proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. I shall relish the sight of your thrashing around in vain. Third statement. There we go. Autopsy report. Objection! It would seem that you are mistaken, Mr. Mr. Plume. I beg your pardon? The autopsy report does indeed say death thought to be the result of an orca attack. But the actual cause of death is contusion from head trauma, not being bitten. What? But, but, I'm sure the victim was bitten. I don't believe that can be true. The security footage doesn't show anything of the kind. Objection. Hmm. Just as I suspected. I knew you would peek at the footage behind Fulbright's back. Well, what did you expect when he wouldn't play nice and share? But unfortunately for you, the footage you saw was only one small part. Huh? Yesterday, after I decided to take this case to trial, I re-reviewed all the evidence. Oh boy. Fucka, the evidence I gave to you for safekeeping. Yes, that hawk is higher up on the pecking order than Fulbright in Black Wheel's book. Ah, very well. Let's view the footage. What's this? The orca is biting the victim. No way! And I have to say that this appears to be very damning evidence. No! I can't believe Orla really bit him! And there is more. Look at this. This photograph was taken while the body was being examined. Hmm, there seems to be strange, a strange bruise on the victim's right wrist. I'll have the crime lab examine the bruise and calculate its relevance to the case at hand. What's important right now is evidence that points to the orc as the killer. Look at the left side of the body. See the orc's tooth marks and the victim's clothes? Yeah, I'll also see how it... Doesn't go through the entire thing. <laughs> yes, they do appear to suggest that she did, in fact, bite the victim. I told you so. And then the killer's whale swam up toward the surface with the victim in its mouth. Objection! However, 
In the autopsy report, the cause of death is contusion from head trauma. Objection. You are much too impetuous, right, Donald? Granted, the orca biting the victim was not the cause of death. The witness was mistaken about that. Then, what explanation is there for what the witness saw? Did I not say in the beginning, the orca toyed with the victim mercilessly? My goodness! After killing the victim, the defendant swam around with his dead body in her mouth. Just like any other predator toying with its prey. Mm. Shut up. Mr. Wright, the hearts of the people in the gallery are suddenly filled with fear. Fear of Orla. So the defendant beat the victim after she had killed him. But if that's the case, then we must still figure out how the defendant killed the victim. Prosecutor Blackwell, do you have a sound theory to give this court? I wouldn't be standing here if I couldn't prove whether the, the orca's heart was black or white. But Orla is black and white. Her body, I mean. Athena, please try not to provoke Prosecutor Blackwell. This witness also observed the actual moment of the murder. Think back, word mistress. Think back to what you observed before the orca bit the victim. Word mistress? Really? Really? Oh my god, I fucking hate him. I mean, I don't, but fuck. Ah, oh, I see what you're driving at. So, that was a true moment of the murder, was it? Now, explain it in a way that even these simpletons can understand. There you go again, ordering me around. Stop that this instant. But whatever. I don't mind telling my story. I saw the killer wail before it toyed with the body as well. I saw it the moment it killed, killed the victim by headbutting him. Or like killed the victim by headbutting him? That's right. It rammed the victim over and over again. Recall that the autopsy report stated that there were bruises all over his body. Recall as well how persistent the defendant can be when she's atta attacking her prey. And we all just saw the killer whale headbutting the victim in the footage. Don't forget. Hmm, that footage backs up Mr. Plume's testimony. But there's also something very important it does not show. Now, do you see what a menace this killer whale is? Objection! I'm sorry, but I can't allow your testimony to stand unchallenged. Looking at this footage, the orca certainly seems to be headbutting something. But you'll note that the something is not the victim. Oh? What? Okay, Marilyn Monroe. I want to look away, but I can't. Even if it was the victim, you couldn't have seen him from where you were, could you? What? Oh, well, I suppose not. Mr. Plume, did you actually witness the victim getting head headbutted by the defendant? Ah, huh, let's see. Oh, I remember now. As I recall, a rock in the shape of a skull was obstructing my view. So, are you admitting that you couldn't see the victim? Yes. Yes, I suppose I am. However, immediately after the headbutting, the victim came floating up. He came up from behind the skull-shaped rock, and his body was all limp. What else could I think except that the killer whale was headbutting the victim? Objection! You didn't actually see the moment of attack itself. And it's... But if you didn't actually see the moment of the attack itself, then it's pure conjecture. Objection! Huh. Must I do everything around here? How dare you speak so rudely to me? There's no need for hysterics. Clear your mind and recall how you reached your conclusion. Though you couldn't see what the orca was attacking, you didn't need to, did you? Because you knew she was behaving exactly as she had only one year prior. Oh. One year ago. That's right. Yes, that's it. That's how I knew the killer whale was headbutting the victim. I'm sorry, but could someone explain exactly what happened a year ago? If you must know, a very similar incident occurred only last year, in which the defendant murdered her trainer. What? The orca murdered her trainer, you say? What? Is this really true? This is not looking good for us. It's all in this book. 
That book, The Killer Killer Whale. That's Mr. Plume's latest work. I was just thinking of picking that up. Last year, the defendant killed her trainer in the middle of a show. The orca headbutted and bit the victim. Same thing she's accused of in this case. An orca killed two people? That thing is a menace. Guilty. Guilty, I say. I never want to go to the beach again. No! Now everyone's even more convinced that Orla did it. You are doing so well. And now... Now everyone in the room has a bad impression of Orla. We're defending an orca. We're defending an orca. We're defending an orca. Okay. I don't want to think she did it. But it's hard to keep on believing in somebody who can't even tell me her side. <laughs> She's cute though. Phoenix! Athena! You gotta believe in Orla! There's no way she killed anybody! You gotta save her! Please! I'm begging you! Sasha, what am I doing doubting my client like this? This is the time to be strong. I believe in Orla, and I'm ready to fight for our clients. I'll take everybody in this courtroom on if I have to. Don't you worry, Sasha. We won't give up on Orla. We'll defend her to the very end. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. We are Orla's lawyers. Who else but us can save her? We can't give up on her now. Hmm. For an instant there, you were afraid of Yorka, weren't you, right, Bulu? When you saw the photograph of the victim from, the, from a year ago, you turned paler than me. He saw right through me. It's obvious you have neither the guts nor the determination to defend the Orca. It's true that Orla can't speak, and I don't know her thoughts. There's a certain someone who believes in Orla with all her heart. I respect the trust she has in Orla, so I'm willing to believe in Orla too. Hmm. And what do you know about Orcas? Nothing. That's what. So, allow me to fill you in. Do you have any idea why Orcas are also called killer whales? Because they are cunning and merciless predators that hunt and kill even true whales. So killer whales really are killers. What terrifying creatures indeed. I can't bear to hear any more of such rubbish as trusting a killer. Can you, your baldness? No matter what you say, I will continue to believe. I don't give up that easily, you know. Dullard, you don't know when to give up, do you? Very well. I shall give you a chance to prove just how determined you are. Witness, spare no quarter and lay the full truth on them. Oh, oh, oh. but of course... That is what I do, after all. Prosecutor Blackwell, what will you have the witness testify about? I shall have her testify about what she saw and what she heard. What she heard? Very well, Mr. Plume. Please tell the court what you saw and what you heard. The killer whale's behavior was exactly, exactly the same as a year ago. As I approached the pool, the killer whale suddenly started singing. As I, I, I was calm when I saw it start to headbutt. But when the pirate hat and victim came floating up, I let out a scream. <laughs> mm, so the orca displayed the same behavior as during the incident a year ago. That's right, those weren't just simple cries, it was singing. As I approached the pool, the killer whale suddenly started singing. It kept headbutting while it sang the swashbuckler spectacular song. That's right. It was singing the same song it sang in the aquarium stage show back then. It was singing while it was headbutting. Oh, it was perfectly horrible. Hmm, I don't see a single obvious inconsistency in this testimony. It's clear I won't be able to take apart her statements with evidence alone. Mr. Wright, now would be a good time for me to put my skills to work. It's time to show what analytical psychology can really do. You seem pretty confident. Let me guess, you noticed the contradiction between the testimony and her emotions. You bet I did. And once we expose it, we just might be able to crack her. 
No, scratch that. Make it. We'll definitely be able to. And let's give your knowledge of anal analytical psychology a try. You got it, boss. A complete analysis of Mr. Plume's heart coming right up. Wouldn't that be kind of surprising, though? As I approached the pool, the killer whale suddenly started singing. I was calm when I saw it start. I was calm? But you're sad. Got it. Mr. Plume, Marla really frightened you with her headbutting, didn't she? Or, or, or frightened. Don't be absurd. I certainly was not frightened by the likes of any killer whale. It must have been something else that scared her then, boss. However, I do remember being very afraid for some reason while I was doing that. It sounds like maybe you saw something we haven't discussed yet. Why is my nose so itchy? Take your time and try to remember what it was. What did you see? This is practically turning into a counseling session. I saw something. Oh, oh, I remember now. Okay, good. Now if you could please tell the court what you saw. I saw, I saw, I saw bright red blood. The killer whale's ramming caused the victim to bleed. And there was a great cloud of blood. What? Yes, that's it. That's why I was so sure. And that's when I knew that killer whale had killed the person for a second time. Well, that was a very compelling statement indeed. Looking at this again, there just appeared to be something that could be a cloud of blood. So her terror was a reaction to blood, was it? That would certainly explain what happened yesterday. Let's take a look at this bloodstained coin. Uh, Seize and desist at once. What kind of man shows a lady blood? Uh, she doesn't have to get so worked up. I was badly injured during an interview once. Ever since then, I've been terrified of blood. The very sight of it dreadfully upsets my delicate sensibilities. This is a bad turn. If Mr. Plume saw blood, then does that mean Orla really did attack the victim? It would appear that orcas are even more vicious than I am. So how does it feel to be thoroughly rammed by your own cross-examination, Vrektolo? <laughs> what do we do now, boss? Uh, that testimony was not at all what I expected to hear. Wait a minute. There's still some discord left in Mr. Plume's heart. What? You mean there's more? Yes, but there's no telling what it is. It could be something even more damaging. Uh, is there even anything left of our case to damage? Well, whatever it is, we have to face it head on. Athena, you believe in Orla, right? If so, there's no reason for us to shy away from the truth. Yeah, you're right. Now we can handle the truth, whatever it is. So let's delve a little deeper. You got it, boss. Mm -hmm. When we started headbutting, I saw the awful blood and was terrified. But when the pirate had and victim came floating up, I let out a scream. But you're not as scared now, huh? Her fear appears to lessen here at this statement. Mr. Plume, weren't you afraid when you saw the victim with blood coming out of him? My, that's a very good question. I was shaken after witnessing a murder, yes, but then but the blood seemed to disappear. Disappear? And why do you suppose that was? Simple, it was because of, a, of the pirate hat. After the killer whale put the hat on, the cloud of blood disappeared. Objection! And how exactly does that work? How should I know? I'm just telling you what I remember, Blue Boy. 
Wait a minute. From whom was this blood that Mr. Plume saw actually coming from? Oh, I get it. Take that! It was actually from Orla. Consider this. Maybe the one who was bleeding wasn't the victim. I beg your pardon? What kind of ridiculous nonsense is that? There was no one else in that pool beside the victim. Oh, I wouldn't say there was no one else. It is an orca pool, after all. What? And where is the alleged injury on the defendant? I'm not sure, but if simply wearing the pirate hat made the blood disappear... Then the blood must have been coming from somewhere on Orla's head. What? The orca's head. What are you prattling on about now? Please think about it again, Mr. Plume. Think back to what you really saw. Uh, I, that is, the one who was bleeding was not the victim, but the killer whale? I remember now. I remember now, sure. There wasn't any blood coming from the victim after all. We did it! Analytical psychology got us what we needed from her. That was a huge help, Athena. It was also pretty dicey for a while, though. Well, this is a surprise. If the blood the witness saw was the defendant's, not the victim's. That is correct. And since there was no blood coming from the victim, there's only one thing we can conclude. That was... That what Mr. Plume witnessed was not the moment of the murder, as she claims. I thought you were unarmed, but it turns out you were concealing a sword all along. Nevertheless, it is far too dull to cut the bone. To the bone. Meaning? I grant that what the witness saw was not the victim's blood, but it proves nothing. After all, being rammed doesn't always result in a wound that bleeds, does it? A death from internal hemorrhaging is also a possibility. He has a point there. If you wish to challenge me to, to a duel, you'll need a sharper blade than that, right, Dol? I demand evidence that proves the witness did not see the moment of the murder. Huh? There must be something. Think, Phoenix. If I'm correct, then the victim's death occurred. Before. If the victim was already dead when Orla attacked her head buddy, that would mean he died sometime before Mr. Plume was, was watching her. The events Mr. Plume witnessed took place at around 10, 10 a.m. I must have something that can tell us about what happened before 10, 10 a.m. Where the hell is the fucking coin? Nope, that's not it. This is security footage. We've only seen the footage from 10.9 to 10.10 a.m. Which means there's still footage going further back that we have that we need to check. Your Honor, I request that all the all the security footage be played for the court. All of the footage? Mr. Plume witnessed a cloud of blood at around 10.10 a.m. But I believe the victim was already dead by that time. So your assertion is that the murder took place before Mr. Plume arrived. Exactly. The security camera footage starts at 10 a.m. when the aquarium opens. And I believe there is vital evidence in, in the 10 minutes before. Hmm. You are quite the gambling man, right, Dono? Are you honestly willing to risk everything on those mere 10 minutes? I've bet on slimmer chances before, but when he puts it that way... My boss is no coward, Prosecutor Blackwell, so I suggest you get ready to eat hum humble pie. Uh-oh, I can't back down now. Well, if the defense is that confident in its importance, Prosecutor Blackwell, the security footage. Fulbright. Roger, I have the rest of the security footage right here. Very well, please play it for the court. Please, please have something for me.
This is what it looked like at 10, 10 a.m. The witness can be seen here. All right, I'll just back the footage up to the, to the beginning now. Ah, it appears Mr. Plume hasn't arrived yet at this point. I have to see if I can find something from before this point in time. Wow, that gave us a lot. <laughs> Is that it? Yep, that's all the footage that there is. Well, Mr. Wright, did you see what you were looking for? We got nothing. Hmm. Well, Wright, don't know. Those were the ten minutes you placed your bet on. Did you see anything of significance? I know, right? Tucker just fucking scratching his head. Did I see anything important? Better think about this carefully. In the footage, we see nothing important. We can see nothing of importance in that footage. Hmm. Just as I thought. Ha ha ha! You were right about that. That section was completely meaningless. It doesn't show a thing. That's why I didn't submit it as evidence. Objection! No, it's just the opposite. Huh? What do you mean by that? In this 10 minutes of footage, something important should be here. That should be there. It isn't there. Let's take the Fulbright. This footage should have been submitted as evidence. What? Are you questioning the way I carry out my duty to justice? Uh. Yes? Mr. Wright, explain yourself, please. What is this important thing that you say should be in the footage but isn't? Uh, the, 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 the body? The important thing we should see in the footage is the, is the victim himself. After the last case, which is in the future, the yes. <laughs> the important thing we should see in this footage is the victim himself, Jack Shipley. I don't know about you, but I didn't see him get in the pool in that footage. Oh. That's right. If the victim is not shown entering the pool in this footage, it means that he must have been there by the skull rock during those ten minutes. But no human being can hold their breath underwater for that long. Wait a minute. Are you saying... When the security camera started up at 10 a.m., the victim was already dead. We love the demons. Murder! Murder in the court! If that's the case, then when was the victim murdered? M murdered? Murdered? I don't know, Your Honor. But we know it, w it had to have been sometime be before 10 a.m. Therefore, this footage can no longer be called decisive evidence against my client. Hmm. But there is no one else who could have killed the victim. Not necessarily. The defense believes that the true culprit may have been human. We have evidence to back up our theory as well. Do you now? I would be very interested in seeing this evidence. The defense's trump card. The thing we found during our investigation yesterday. I wouldn't go so far as to call it decisive, but... Now's the time to play it. Very right, well, Mr. Wright. Please submit your evidence. What evidence shows that the crime may have been committed by a human? Now... We're moving on to the point. God, why am I so yawny? <laughs> I mean, I know why. Because I couldn't fucking get to sleep. I, I couldn't sleep until 7 a.m. And then I woke up at 5 and I'm like, fuck! What's this? A coin? Yes, a fake coin used in the aquarium's pirate show. He found it beside the pool. And this coin is quite possibly a real, the real murder weapon. This tiny little coin is the murder weapon? Mr. Wright, if this is another one of your bluffs. Hmm. As they say, the bolder the presentation, the less confident the solicitor. 
Oh, I tried. I tried to sleep earlier, but it... Okay, but this song is in this tempo kind of works, though. Hmm, as I say, the bolder the presentation, the less confident the solicitor. This is no bluff. And this isn't the only coin. There are 300 of these coins altogether, weighing a total of about 7 pounds. This one just happens to have blood on it. I do have the blood analyzed to see whose it is. Okay, why is it so slow? I don't get it. Hold on. Let me just do this. And wait for it to go up. There it is. I'll continue, maybe. Of course, here we go. Okay. Whatever. We'll just have to deal with it for a while. You have the blood analyzed to see whose it is. Not yet. But there were coins scattered all around the body, and the victim had a head wound. Taking these things into account, I believe it has to be the victim's blood. So to put it together, we have about seven pounds of coins by the side of the pool. One of them with the blood stain on it. I think the answer is pretty clear here. Your Honor. The defense proposes that the victim was killed beside the pool. The side of the pool? But if the murder took place there, it would be difficult to say the orca did it. I realize you are trying to defend your client, but that theory is preposterous. How could 300 coins possibly be made to hit someone all at once? It'd be pretty easy if they were in a bag or something of that, of that nature. And so where is this bag the coins were in? Unfortunately, Your Honor, we recovered nothing of the sort from the scene. It's possible the culprit took it with them. They took it. They took it? The true culprit used the coins as a blunt instrument to commit murder. They then threw the body into the pool before the security camera started up. And then they left. Taking the bag the coins were in with them. And they got rid of the evidence that points to a human culprit to pin the blame on Orla. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try and restart it. <laughs> because that was fucking ridiculous. <laughs> okay, I don't know what happened. Why won't it- Why won't it be bigger than this? <laughs> no! Hold on, if we just exit out of that app, like, completely. <laughs> we love technical difficulties. Huh, I don't know what happened, but I don't think it was supposed to... Oh no, are you kidding me? Fuck! Why? Damn it! Okay, uh, I'm gonna restart my computer, but I will be back. Because I want to, I want to, I want to finish this. I think just, like, the, the program, it just, it just goofed a bit. It should be fine. Oh. Damn. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> well, um... Uh... Please stick around, I will be right back. Okay, but I, I will be go- I, I'll, I will go offline for, for a, a, a little while. I think, anyways. So, yeah. There we go. Now, we should be good to go. That was brilliant, Mr. Wright. You found a way to introduce the possibility of a human perpetrator. Yeah, somehow. Let's hope my luck holds out. Hmm, I wonder why Prosecutor Blackwell hasn't said anything. The possibility of a perpetrator rather than the defendant has now been suggested. But if we hold this possibility to be true, then what did Mr. Bloom witness? Damn, I should have just made it through this part because literally the next chapter is like after this part, whatever. It's fine. That's right. I saw the killer whale attack the victim. Just like it did a year ago, singing a song. Hmm, I guess there still is that. Even with somebody else as the culprit, Orla's behavior still seems pretty bizarre. I wonder why... I wonder why did she... I wonder why did she was doing... I wonder why she was doing the same... Th Hold on. I wonder why she did the same thing she did a year ago. That has to be something. That has to be what it, it has to be like, right? I don't fucking know. But are they really that bizarre? What do you mean? To explain the inexplicable, all we have to do is turn our thinking around. Turn our thinking around, huh? Sounds good to me. I'm gonna give the old turn my thinking around method a try. Instead of trying to figure out why Orla did the same thing she did a year ago, I should consider the results that were produced by her behavior this time around. sang a song, did some headbutts, and bit the victim. I'm okay. If the real culprit wanted to shift the suspicion onto Orla... ...then they would have needed to give people a reason to think Orla did it in the first place. Mr. Wright, as her lawyer, how do you explain your client's actions? I believe we should think of it in this way, Your Honor. What kind of effect did Orla's action have on the actions have on the case? Hmm, very well. Then why don't you explain it for the court? How did the defendant's actions af affect the case? They uh, created a witness. No. Yes? Mr. Plum focused her attention on the orca pool because she heard the song. The orca's act of singing a song created a witness. Created a witness? Isn't it possible? Fabricating a witness was the real culprit's true, in true intention. After all, Mr. Plum witnessed two things. She saw Orla headbutt something over and over, and she saw the orca bite the victim. Those two actions of Orla's might have been... The real culprit's plot to make the witness think the orca was attacking the victim. Are you saying that the defendant was being manipulated by the true perpetrator? Exactly. That would explain Orla's actions perfectly. But the defendant is an orca. Is it even possible to manipulate her? Yes, there is a way to manipulate Orla's behavior with this. Oh, where? No, goddammit. Fuck! Is this a whistle? Yes, Your Honor. Trainers at the aquarium use whistles to issue commands to Orla. But in truth, anyone can do it, provided they know the right signals. Ah, that must be how they get Orla to do tricks for their pirate shows. 
The true culprit hid the body in the spot that couldn't be seen from the visitor's corridor. Then, when Miss Plume appeared, they gave Orla the commands. In other words, Orla was manipulated by the culprit to perform a series of tricks. What? And, as for you, Mr. Plume. You were manipulated by the true culprit to play the part of the witness. I... I... Norma de Plume was set up. I, Norma de Plume, writer extraordinaire, was used... N no! Mr. Plume, please do something about your attire. Uh, that was one wardrobe malfunction I did not want to see. It would appear we need to shift our suspicion towards someone other than Orla. Prosecutor Blackwell, please have the bloodstained coin analyzed. <laughs> you waste your breath. I guess even Prosecutor Blackwell can't refute the possibility of a human suspect. You did it, boss! If the crime happened beside the pool, there is no way an orchid could have done it. Now, if only we could find the bag the coins were in. Hmm, in light of the new discovery, it would appear that the or orca couldn't have done it. Exactly, Your Honor. If the blood on the coin proves that proves to be that of the victim, we can un unequivocally return overturn Orla's accusation. Objection! Or return the defendant's accusation. Hm, I think not. Ah! My hair! My beautiful hair! Yesterday, a new inmate was brought into the prison. He said the moment you relax is when you're the most valuable, vulnerable. Hmm, and what did this man go in for? He's merely a sneaky thief who enjoys a spot of fishing now and, now and again. But right down here would be easier to hook than any fish. Hawk sure does love the judge's head. What's this? That coin from before it. Some sort of bag? A bag? I don't think I'm gonna like this. This is the coin bag that 300 coins were written. I believe you were looking for this. Where did you get that? I never said we didn't fight at the crime scene. The bag had blood on it, so naturally I had it sent to the crime lab. And? Does the blood belong to the victim? It does indeed, as does the blood on the coin. I knew it. So the blood on the coin did belong to the victim. The bag was open and the coins had all spilled out. But the bag alone wasn't proof enough to say that it was used as a murder weapon. However, thanks to the defense and their coin, I am more than satisfied that it was. Prosecutor Blackwell, are you conceding that, tr that the true culprit committed the murder with the bag of coins? I shall concede that the victim was put into the pool after his death. However, even with the bag... It doesn't change the fact that it was the orca that killed the victim. What? How can you still suspect Orla? You said that the true culprit manipulated Orla's behavior. But Orla isn't the kind of orca that would let someone control her. If anything, Orla used the victim's behavior against him to murder him. What? But... Are you arguing that the orca manipulated a human being? Hmm. To prove it, I have summoned another witness. Marlon Rhymes. Take the stand. Marlon Rhymes? Is a witness? Well, just stand there. State your name. Please don't rap. I told you I didn't want to be a witness. I thought one witness would be quite enough to prove the defendant's guilt. But apparently Raitono won't be satisfied until every stone is turned. Well, son of a... Alright, fine. If I gotta talk, then let's get this over with. Mr. Rhymes doesn't seem like a willing witness. I wonder what Prosecutor Blackwell is going to have him testify about. Um, 
So, could we have your name and occupation for the record witness? Ahoy, yo, yo, yo ho ho, people of the law, time to testify. Chilling with my crew at the ship ship, orcas, penguins, and the seascape. Cleaning and feeding, there ain't no wind. But them bride kids' tours, I shall transcend. True noob and animal keeper from the house of rhymes. I'm the master keeper, Marlin with the rhymes. Also, Marlin, as in like the the fish, you know, and Marlin. Huh. Oh my, I'm afraid I couldn't understand a word you said. Is that that flip flop music young people nowadays like? The flip flop music. So close, Your Honor. So close, and yet so far. Please proceed with your testimony, witness. Without the flip flop. Okay, fine. I don't want to do this, I tell you. I feel like I'm selling Sasha out. Please don't refer to it as split flop. <laughs> At about 10, 10 a.m., I was in the staff room. I heard a loud noise from the pool room. I went to the door to look in. I couldn't see the captain or the orca, but I saw a bunch of coins scattered around. Well, the orca knows there's a certain spot people stand to play volleyball with her. I think maybe she knocked down the stuff that was piled up there and hit the captain. Hmm. So that gives us a little more info about the area around the orca pool. And the defendant made the stuff fall down. Overturned crates and assorted props were scattered all over from all over the pool room floor. There is no doubt that it was the orca that caused the mess. But could she really have done that from the within the pool? Hmm. As I said, the orca is the only one that could have performed such a feat. The pool and its room were tidied the night before, including its various odds and ends. But when our rhyming Marlin checked on the scene, over 400 pounds of props had fallen. To move it all in one go would it challenge even the brawny prisoner in the cell next to mine. What is he? What is he? The jail gossip? So, how did 400 pounds of items fall at once? I'll tell you how. The orca pulled on the cloth that was underneath them. A weight that would be all but impossible for a human to move was child's play to an orca. During a friendly game of volleyball, the defendant made the crates fall, and the bag of coins that was among the items fell on the victim's head and killed him. The orca then toyed with the victim's body underwater, which is what Mr. Plume saw. Objection! But the witness only said he heard a loud noise. That does not automatically make it the sound of Orla making the items fall. Also, why did you only look why did you only look in the pool? Well um, why did you only look in the pool room anyway, Mr. Rhymes? God I struggle with that sentence for some reason. An orca sometimes make a loud noise makes a loud noise to summon her trainer, but I'm still a newbie, so I don't have a security card to get into the pool room yet. So even if she tries to summon somebody, there wasn't much I can do about it. I see. So the witness couldn't enter the crime scene. Objection! If Mr. Rhymes couldn't enter the room, there is at least one thing he can't be sure about. His statement that the orca was playing volleyball is purely speculation. Silence. Whether the orca was actually playing volleyball or not is not the issue. Traces of the orca's saliva were found on the cloth that was underneath the crates. The important point is that the orca is the only one that could have moved the items. Ah. <sighs> To discredit that statement somehow. If I don't, it'll mean that Orla was a culprit, even if the victim died beside the pool. Mm. 
In the staff room, you say? Objection! Dumbass. You say you were in the staff room, but is that really true? Of course it's true. Why would I lie about a thing like that? Mr. Rhymes, have you ever seen this calendar before? Hey, that's... I see you recognize it. Yeah, that's a rifle calendar. It's a big hit at the Ship Shape Aquarium gift shop. Thank you for shopping at Ship Shape. Mr. Rhymes, please refrain from scattering fish around the witness stand. Not to worry, your baldness. Tucka will have them cleaned up in no time. I guess that bird comes in handy now and then. Alright, Mr. Wright. We have all seen your cute souvenir. Now, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, no, Your Honor. This isn't my calendar. It was originally the witnesses, but it came into the possession of a certain young lady. Tucka deserves the fish. What? Sorry, no, that was not... What? That's it. <laughs> Mr. Rhymes and this young lady first met each other in the food prep room. After a mishap, their calendars got switched around. They ran into each other at about 10.10am 10, 10 in the food prep room. So clearly the witness was not in the staff room. In other words, there's no way he could have heard the noise in the pool room upstairs. <laughs> What's this? This is the first I'm hearing about a new calendar. That's because Mr. Rhymes and Pearls were keeping it a secret. You lie to me? This transgression will not go unpunished. So, Mr. Rhymes, you didn't hear the noise of the equipment falling after all, did you? Okay, I admit it. I didn't hear the noise in the orca pool room myself. But somebody told me about it. Who told you about it? It was... Uh... Unless you tell the truth, Mr. Rhymes, I can't save Orla. And I'm sure you know how sad that would make Miss Buckler. I heard about it. From Sasha. What? From Miss Buckler? That doesn't make sense! What is going on here? Hmm. Now it's the trainer's own words that drive the orca into a corner. How do you like being bitten by your own client, right, Donald? Ugh. I certainly didn't see this coming. What perfect timing. There was something I wanted to ask Miss Buckler about the orca. The prosecution calls the trainer, Miss Sasha Buckler, to the stand. Yes, I suppose it would be a good idea to hear what the orca's trainer has to say. I don't know what Sasha is going to say, but I'll just have to meet bid it head on, whatever it is. We will take a 20 minute recess while the witness is summoned. Okay, I think... Uh, let me see, is that very long? No. This next part isn't long at all. Hui. Mr. Wright, are you going to cross-examine Sasha? I guess I'll have to ask her about the noise from the stuff falling down. Mr. Wright. Mr. Rhymes, why did you lie? I, I didn't want Sasha to have to appear in court. I thought if anybody had to testify, I should be the one to do it for her. But why would you go to all those lengths? Did you see the entry for the 20th on that calendar? The note about meeting the captain at the orca pool? Yeah, I found that calendar in the nap room. I think it's probably Sasha's. And that means... I guess it does look more like a... Like more of a woman's calendar than a man's. I didn't want suspicion to fall on Sasha. Mr. Wright. I gotta go back to the aquarium to look after the orca in Sasha's place. I'll be rooting for you in, on the other end of that TV phone. Please take care of Sasha. No stereotypes. Yeah, that's um...
now we're gendering calendars. For real, though. Okay, we can't let Prosecutor Blackwell get the best of us. Time to refocus. You're right. After all, we're the only ones who can save Orla. There are four chapters left. Four parts, I guess. The court will now reconvene. Prosecutor Blackwell, please call the witness to the stand. Again, you waste your breath. Me name be Sasha, and I be one of Captain Orla's swashbucklers. I come to rescue me Bucko from the false charges put on her by Dread Pirate Nostash. Nostash. I guess Nostash refers to Prosecutor Blackpool this time. Well, I can't be the judge. She has a mustache and a full beard. Now then, Captain Judge, shall we begin the pirate court? Captain Judge, I rather like that. It makes me feel like a salty old sea dog. And scene. How was that for a self-intro? The court is not a show. State your full name and occupation. I'm Sasha Buckler. I work at Ship Ship Aquarium. I perform in our Swashbuckler Spectacular Pirate Show alongside Orla as our trainer. Well, you seem like a completely different person now. You really think so? Thanks. I was in my pirate show persona just then. Prosecutor Blackbill said I could introduce myself any way I like. I had money he didn't think you were going to do it like that. And what will this witness testify about? The orca manipulated the victim into playing a volleyball and then knocked the, the items down. The witness will report about hearing the noise that caused the victim's death. Now wait just a minute. Sure, Orla uses the ball to break props sometimes. She even spiked the ball at the giant octopus's leg yesterday when I was cleaning. So Orla was the one who broke that leg, huh? But she couldn't have knocked down that huge sack of equipment with her little ball. Hmm, I thought you were paying attention to the trial over the telecast. But you apparently know nothing of what we have been discussing. The orca knocked down the equipment by pulling on the cloth that was underneath it. No one said anything about the orca knocking it down with a ball. What? Is that what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. I came in here to give Prosecutor Nostash a good keel hauling. But I'm the one getting the cat o nine cat o nine tails. Oh, he's as vicious as a tiger shark. Miss Buckler! Just focus on your testimony and you'll be alright. Don't worry, we'll take care of that tiger shark for you. Thank you, Athena. Okay, I can do this. My testimony will be phenomenal. Alright, Miss Buckler, please proceed with your testimony. I admit I heard Orla summoning me with a loud noise, but the aquarium's Aquarium guest scream I heard over the walkie-talkie was more urgent. That sounds like fun. I talked to Norma de Plume first, and then went to the pool room with the security guard. The equipment was everywhere, and the captain was lying in the middle of it all. Hmm, her story doesn't seem to be much different from Marlon Ranks' testimony. Or does it? The circumstances are different. The actual order of Orla's actions depend on the order the witness he heard the two noises. If she heard the scream first, the prosecution's claims don't stand up. Objection. Hm. Unfortunately for you, she doesn't remember the order of what she heard. Sh she doesn't? I was distracted at the time, so I don't really recall which one I heard first. I was lost in thought until the guard brought me back to myself. Sorry, I'm no help. As long as the order remains unclear, I shall not alter the prosecution's claims. After killing the victim with a bag of coins, the orca toyed with the body in the water. I have to turn things around here somehow. Unless I can prove the sound Sasha heard was not the sound of the victim's murder. Echo's claim 
that Orla pulled down the equipment to kill the victim will stand. If I want to save Orla, I have to find a contradiction, no matter how small. Very well, your cross-examination, please, Mr. Wright. Yeah, they're mammals, right? So, uh... They actually give birth and don't just lay eggs. Alright. Four statements. What do you recall about the scene exactly? You're like, can I talk? They are not mammals. <laughs> Sorry, you just seem so passionate about it. I love it, honestly. No, 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 no. It's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. Uh... Oh, you're right. Interesting. Wait, but then what are they? <laughs> what do you recall about the scene exactly? I don't remember much, to be honest. Yeah. So, what is a fish if it doesn't lay eggs? <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Don't remember much, to be honest. I was in total shock from seeing the captain like that. If you ask me something specific, I might be able to remember them. Specific questions, huh? Okay, let's see. What should I ask her about the things scattered around? Could you tell me more about the things that were scattered around? They were equipment and props for the new show. The new show? Yeah, we were supposed to debut a brand new swashbuckler spectacular yesterday. We already defeated the giant octopus and nose dash after all. Going to have a new nemesis, Red Stash. He's on the flyer. Oh, that's the flyer rifle was distributing. Mm. Who will obtain the gold coins hidden in the school rock? Oh, I wish it could be me. Leave it to you, Athena, to know all about it. Marla's even got some new tricks for the new show. So all the stuff that fell down was for the new show, is that it? That's right! A bunch of props and crates and other equipment stacked up. Your Honor, for the record, I like that information added to the witness's testimony. Very well. Miss Buckler, please append what you said to your testimony. Sure thing. Proud for the new show were everywhere, and the captain was in the middle of it all. These props for the new show. What kind of things were they? A blow up dolphin and an anchor, Red Stash's costume, the bag of coins, stuff like that. The captain was wearing his usual costume, and the new props were all there. What a wait a wait a minute. Something about that doesn't seem right. Is there a problem with Sasha's testimony? Yes, there is, apparently. You say the captain was wearing his usual costume. But is that completely accurate? Hold on, let me... Oh, he's wearing the scarf! 
Come on, Phoenix. What are you nitpicking my testimony for? If we look at the body, we see that there's a discrepancy between that and your statement. Vivipars, ovovivipars, and ovipars? <laughs> what's the difference? Or like, what's like the... Yeah. <laughs> I'm not very big on biology, but... It's interesting. Huh, <sighs> okay. If we take- if you look at the body, we see that there's a discrepancy between that and your statement. You stated that the victim was wearing his usual costume. But you'll notice that the victim was wearing a red scarf around his neck. I imagine this red scarf is part of his costume for the new pirate show. Oh, you're right. It's written right here in the flyer for the new show. Featuring the dashing red stash with a fluttering red scarf. Well, I have to say, it just looks like a red scarf was added to his old costume. Yeah, well, the captain was never one to spend much money on costumes. But, you know, the captain wasn't wearing that red scarf. But in this photo, I believe I see a red scarf. Yeah, but it's not wrapped around his neck. It's just draped on top of his neck. That red scarf was packed away in the rest of the new show's equipment. It must have fallen on top of the captain when the equipment fell down. Oh, I see. It looks like your discrepancy wasn't really a discrepancy after all. Well, the scarf doesn't have anything to do with the case. And there's something about the timing of the stuff falling that bothers me. Hold on. The timing of the stuff falling. The timing. Maybe my theory has been all wrong from the beginning. Maybe the bag of coins isn't the murder weapon. <laughs> and, and so, your last cross-examination ends in failure as well. You should know that such a feeble slash will never hurt me. As I said, the orca made the equipment fall, and then toyed with the body in the water. Objection! I am sorry, Prosecutor Blackwell, but based on the circumstances at the scene, the defendant couldn't have dragged the body into the water after the equipment fell. Hmm? And why, pray tell, is that? Oh, I'll tell you alright. If my theory has been all wrong, then I'll just have to fix it. Yes, Mr. Wright. Please do tell the court. What indicates that the body was not dragged into the water after the after the items fell? Interesting. I never knew that. Huh. It doesn't conjure up a disturbing mental image. Blair is just here to be mentally scarred, apparently. Huh, this red skull fell at the same time as the bag of coins. But if the body was dragged into the pool after the bag of coins fell, then the red scarf wouldn't still be on top of the body. What? In other words... The victim was already dead when the equipment came crashing down. Mermaid's purse. Damn it. You fucking got me curious now, too.
What the fuck is that? <laughs> That looks so strange. They kind of look like bats with no wings and no heads. <laughs> Anyways, back to the game. Hmm. Therefore, the bag of coins that fell with the red scarf was not the murder weapon. Silence. But it was the defense who claimed the bag of coins was the murder weapon to begin with. Well, yes, that's true. Do you intend to abandon your original argument? After hearing the testimony, I feel like my theory about the murder weapon was wrong. Please recall the facts that we have learned so far. The it's the fact that what Orla bit was the victim's dead body. After all, when we saw the victim on the security footage, he was already dead. But then, Orla carried the victim's body to the side of the pool. And knocked down the equipment for the new pirate show that was piled up there. Maybe Orla was trying to alert the humans to the victim's condition. If Orla knocked the items down on the victim after he was already dead, then it means the defendant didn't kill the victim with those items. That's preposterous! Even still, your argument is lacking. If neither the orca's head but hudbedding nor the bag of coins were the matter of death, then how do you propose the victim was killed? <laughs> we tricked you into studying. You fell right into our trap. Hell yeah! <laughs> now, very good point. If the defense is now abandoning its original theory, then we would need a new theory as to what the murder weapon was. Uh, all right. I doubt I have no clue. Would go good. Would go over well. All right. Let's go over what we still need to find out about the victim's body. What we don't know is how he died, and why his body was at the bottom of the pool. I wonder if there's something that would explain both of those things at once. Hmm, how did the victim's body sink to the bottom of the pool? On a diagram, it's easy enough to move the body to the bottom of the pool. But in real life, the water would just cause the body to float. Right, hold on. Water. Okay, now what if we flip that around? What if there was no water? Then the body would go right down in an instant. And I'm like, where the hell is does the orca go? <laughs> so could the real manner of death be? Thanks for the great hint, Athena. What? I helped you and I didn't even know it? Your Honor, I think we know the real manner of the victim's death. And I think won't do, Mr. Wright. I expect a clear answer. Now then, what was the real manner of Jack Shipley's death? What's the manner of death that moved the victim to the bottom of, of the pool in an, in an instant? It's falling. Please take a look at this diagram of the orca pool. If there was no water in this pool. And it would be very easy to move the victim's body to the bottom of the pool. He would just drop straight down. Oh my! Could that be the true manner of death? The orca pool is about 65 feet deep. If the victim were to go from the top of the pool to the bottom, when there was no water, then he would, without question, have fallen to his death. Death from a fall! Mm -hmm. and that's your answer. It all makes perfect sense! If he fell, that would explain the signs of blunt force trauma all over the body too. The culprit pushed the victim into the pool when there was no water in it. After doing something to keep the body from floating up, they filled the pool with water. The pool water washed away any signs of blood, 
so no one would realize that he fell. Surprisingly, that actually makes sense. Order! Order in the court! I'm just as surprised as you are, but I must have order. If falling was a matter of death, then does that mean the defendant's behavior? was the result of being manipulated by the true culprit, as the defense claimed. Yes, I would have to be. All that needs to be explained now is how the real culprit commanded Orla. Miss Buckler, is there a way to instruct Orla to bite someone? What? What kind of trick would that be? Of course not. Could you tell us about the tricks Orla does know? Well, there's jumping, dancing, and playing volleyball. And she can spin, do the rock and roll trick, and sing the swashbuckler spectacular song. Those sound like pretty nice tricks, but I doubt they're related to this case. She's also practicing two new top secret tricks. There's the human rocket, where she shoots somebody up into the air. And then there's the lifesaver trick, where she brings a drowning person to the surface. Hey, one of those top secret tricks might have something to do with the case. Now, which of these two tricks sounds relevant to the case, lifesaver? When the lifesaver trick, Orla brings a drowning person to the surface, correct? You caught it! Orla's still learning how to hold someone gently in her mouth. So she sometimes bites into their clothes, but she's never hurt a person's skin. She brings a drowning person to the surface? Then that must be it! And then the killer whale swam up toward the surface with the victim in its mouth. And that matches up perfectly with what Miss Mr. Plume said in her testimony. The real culprit must have used the lifesaver trick command to, to manipulate Orla. Hmm, I still find this very hard to believe. Let's see it for ourselves. Let's have Orla show us her trick using a practice dummy. Hmm, <clears throat> as you wish. The prosecution doesn't appear to have any objection. Miss Buckler, please proceed. Okay, sure. I'll show you Orla's phenomenal trick. Hey, Marlin, are you ready over there? Okay, let me just go get the practice dummy. There, it's in the pool. Ready and standing by, Sasha. Here goes, Orla's secret new trick. The lifesaver. Big moment of work. Oh, because that, okay. The clothes got torn up a little, but the dummy doesn't have any new marks on it. And there you have it. Marla's secret new trick. Wow, that orca is really something. A cute thing like that wouldn't hurt anybody. Sounds like the gallery loved Orla's performance. Oh, it's great! That awesome trick captured everybody's heart. Oh, 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 wonderful! I wish I could see more. Looks like we silenced pro pro Looks like we silenced Prosecutor Blackwell. Thank you, Orla and Miss Buckler, and thank you too, Mr. Ranks. And so, now you can clearly see how Orla was manipulated. The bottom of the orca pool needs to be examined immediately. We might still find some evidence of the victim falling to his death. Prosecutor Blackwell, please have that taken care of at once. Alright, excuse me, Prosecutor Blackwell, but I am requesting further investigation. Prosecutor Blackwell, you have to answer the ju nice judge politely. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. The thing you asked for just came in. Mm -hmm. You couldn't be bothered to think of a less violent way to deliver it. Says the dude that throws knives. Okay, sure. What did Prosecutor Blackwell ask for? Hmm. I've been waiting for this. Oh, and what is that? An updated lots of therapy! Yes! 
fucking. <laughs> Uh, I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. Didn't I fucking? I I fucking called it. I fucking called it. Like, where the fuck did it go? Well, there it is. Because it said instant death, and I'm like, mm, did it now? Did it now? What? Why did it have to come now? During the recess, I ordered the body to be re-examined. Something started nagging at me during the course of the trial, you see. Here. You might take it you'd like me to read it. Very well. Cause of death. Thought to be from 65 foot fall. But this... But this is decisive evidence that substantiates Mr. Wright's ter theory. What? It's something good for a change? If the matter of death was falling into an empty pool, the Orca can't be responsible. It seems Orla's complete innocence has been proven. Hmm. I suppose I can't deny that. This is fantastic! You did it, Mr. Wright! Prosecutor Blackwell isn't even trying to refute it! Orla is saved! Yeah. Is it really safe to celebrate? It would appear more investigation into this case is necessary, but first allow me to render my verdict. The court finds the defendant or Shipley. This is a late April Fool's joke. There are still three, like, parts left. You did it! Thank you so much, Phoenix. Thank you, Athena. Marlin, Marlin, thank you too. Congrats, Sasha. Time to celebrate. Go on, eat up. <laughs> Glad to see everybody so happy. And I'm absolutely thrilled about the verdict. Thank you, right, Donald? Huh? For what? Hmm. The drained pool. Thanks to you. The truth is finally clear. Fulbright. Arrest this woman. Certainly. Right away, Prosecutor Blackwell. Sasha Buckler. You are hereby under arrest for the murder of Jack Shipley. What? What are you talking about? What reason could you possibly have? Come now. You must have had some idea in the back of your dull little mind. The true culprit manipulated the Orca in order to have false charges brought upon her. And who is the only one with the ability to accomplish that? He can only be the Orca's trainer. But I'm sure there's some other explanation. Silence. I don't need any of your baseless counter-arguments. Have you forgotten? In order to enter the Orca pool room, a security card is necessary. A security card that only the victim and Sasha Buckler possessed. Miss Buckler is the only one who could have caused the victim to fall to his death. <laughs> what? No! I don't believe it! Miss Buckler was so upset by Mr. Shipley's death, she couldn't have done it! Fulbright. We asked the security company yesterday to check their security card logs. The report just came in during the recess. The night before the incident, Sasha Buckler used her card to enter the Orca pool room. After that, not a single person entered the pool room. Not until the incident was discovered. When Miss Buckler and the guard ran in. Objection! And no one would commit murder where their card usage was being recorded. Apparently, the aquarium employees don't know that their card usage is usage is tracked. What's more, Miss Buckley was seen arguing with the victim before the incident. So, Miss Trainer, what were you arguing about? It was a private matter. But it wasn't anything I would kill him over. That's ridiculous. Miss Buckler is the only one who entered the room, and she knows how to command Orla. Besides, I thought her suspicious from the very beginning. You suspected Miss Buckler from the start. 
the Orca did tricks because someone commanded her to do so. Possibly someone with a heart so black as to make her own partner the murder weapon. The possibility the Orca killed the victim. The possibility a human manipulated the Orca. He looked into both. So he suspected both Sasha and Orla all along. Hmm. My gratitude to you, after all. You were the one who drew out that information about the life about the lifesaver trick. The orca you saved was an unwitting victim. A victim made to look like the weapon killed Jack Shipley. Mm -hmm. No. All right, come along then. Let's have a good long talk. Wait, I didn't kill the captain, and I would never try to frame Orla. Well, why would I hurt the ones I love like that? Sasha, Phoenix, Athena, you gotta believe me. I. Yay, we won! Sasha didn't kill him! I believe that with all my heart! There's gotta be something we can do! I feel the same way. Could I have done something differently? But never in my wildest dreams did I imagine things turning out like this. Hmm. It would appear that this case has taken on an entirely new aspect. But this trial is only concerned with the ruling on the defendant, or a Shipley. So I'm afraid this concludes today's trial. Court is adjourned. Okay, and the next chapter is, I bet, long because it's an investigation. Yep, oh, oh yep. Mm, oh, oh, mm. I think I'm a leave that here and at least like continue tomorrow if if i finish it i don't know All right. Oh my god, yes, do it, do it. Ah, anyways. That's it for today. I'm gonna find out one way I can do something. I don't know. I want to try and splice the two together. But I would have to, like, download them for that. No, 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 no. That's the... That was the, that was the previous one. This is Turnabout Reclaimed. Turnabout for Tomorrow is the one from the main game. Mm-hmm. But yeah, let me see here. If I go here. Can I download this? Well, yeah, we are. <laughs> we are indeed turnabouting tomorrow. I'm hoping that um, I'll get to actually sleep tonight before 7 a.m. <laughs> Please do. And uh, I'm not really sure. Next week is my birthday and uh, my father will be coming over on Tuesday, so I think I'm gonna drop streaming then. So I'm hoping that if I can f like uh, finish this game tomorrow, then I'll take a Sunday off and start Spirit of Justice on Monday. Right? Because it's only like two parts, right? 
Something like that, anyways. Let's see here, how many... Ah, oh, actually, there's only one trial. Maybe I can even do two, since... Well, I'll, I'll have to... See about that. <laughs> so, yeah, and I'm not sure what happens on Wednesday, which is when my birthday actually is, because I'm having my mother and sister over, and um, I don't know how long they will be here for, so I'm hoping, I really, I, I, I want to have a birthday stream, though. So it's just gonna be me, like, playing Ace Attorney, you know? It's, make it as usual. <laughs> Nothing very different, I think. But you know, it's it's more special because it, it's my birthday, you know? <laughs> I turned 24. Oh my god. That's so cute. You gotta send me pictures of that cake. I asked my mom to make me raspberry cake. And she was like, what kind of cake? And I'm like, surprise me. And then she's like, oh, so you want like a... Um, this like birthday cake, you know, with like cream and stuff. And I'm just like, surprise me. <laughs> but for my sister, I was like, I want, I want apple pie. <laughs> because she makes a... A great apple pie. And my mom is like, why do you need so much cakes? And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I want cakes. And I can't decide if I want raspberry cake or if I want apple pie. Like... Ah... <sighs> Oh yeah, for sure they are. That's funny. Because mine is also on the 7th. And it's also very funny that like... My mom's birthday is like pretty much like exactly on like my half birthday. <laughs> Which is why it's so easy for me to remember. Isn't he in like... February 29th? Isn't that just Bieber's birthday? <laughs> nope. May 1st? I could fucking swear! What? <laughs> there was like- no, 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 there was like a whole fucking meme about it. What? March 1st. That's it, okay. But, mm.
Huh. I could swear there was like, I remember, I swear I remember there was a fucking meme that his birthday was the 29th. So it's like, uh -huh, he's actually like four years old or something. I don't fucking know. I remember it being a fucking meme like years and years ago. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, but I, I swear I remember Justin Bieber, like, there was a meme about him being, like, a leap year baby. I guess not. <laughs> I feel like to. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm kidding. That's not that serious. Um, but yeah. I guess it's kind of redundant to do this, like, at the end of the stream, but... I just want to apologize to uh, who was it the, that oh god I forgot the name I'm so sorry I am the worst person damn um I w want to apologize to someone <laughs> now that I, I don't think that he's ever gonna see this but still um The Baronade. The Baronade who was the person that uh, raided me last time. I just want to apologize because I didn't realize at the time that they were playing Danganronpa 2. And I just had like this giant rant about Danganronpa at the end of my stream. And I just felt like really bad about it. <laughs> so... Yeah, <laughs> I don't really know like what else to say. I'm like, I felt so bad when I realized that because I went, I went to check it out, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I felt so bad about it. Oh my god. Huh. So, yeah. <laughs> God, I've deleted my Tumblr like several times. And then I regretted it like immediately afterwards, and I'm like, fuck! Huh. <sighs> but yes, the Baronade. I am so sorry for ranting about Tangantrumpa. I had no idea that you were playing at the time. And I'm not saying it's a bad game by any means. I'm just saying that I can't with it anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I just... Good for you. Good for you, Bengi. <laughs> so, yeah. I hope that you can actually enjoy the games in ways that I wasn't able to. Because I'm pretty sure I just, like, envy the people that actually enjoy the game because I can't. <laughs> because I can't. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I'm gonna finish this episode tomorrow, hopefully. Anyways, hold on. Actually, let me just take take a take a look. Take a look at how long it is. I'm on the wrong page. Okay, so the trials are uh, nah, they're okay. The first one and the second one. Uh, it's okay. It's just the investigation that lasts a long time. So it's like two hours investigating. And then there's like one hour per trial, which I can deal with. So I will most likely finish it tomorrow. If 
And then it's SOJ time on Monday. Yeah. With that, I'm gonna go and do something or other. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna try and download these two episodes, splice them together, and upload them. Which is... Well, I say episodes, but I mean the streams. Oh, the first one, yes! Finally, please actually be able to download properly because I've been struggling so much with that. Because my, my regular, like, not the hard drive, but like, well, I guess the hard drive. It's been, it's, it's full. I have some, like, external hard drives. But downloading to those is a bit of a struggle. I mean, I'll, I'll probably figure it out, but still. Okay, yeah, with that, uh, I hope to see you tomorrow. When we will save Sasha Buckler. And have a whale of a time. <laughs> God, I'm so funny. I'm so funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.